really standing out right now. Uh, that is one that I'm concerned about. And again, that will be lifting into green and Pickens, uh, yeah, green and Pickens counties here uh, as it moves north and east. So uh, that is why we're here at this point. Um, we have a lot of damage reports, but not necessarily from storms, just winds out ahead of these storms, as we told you they would be, have been really rough, actually. I know a lot of people have, um, have uh, uh, power out right now. But uh, again, the tornado threat in far western Alabama is ramping up, and these storms will also pose a destructive straight line wind threat as well. So, Ashley, we'll go back to you. That, that Sumter County storm is starting to stand out a little more to me, though. All right, thanks, Alex. And Alex, we might have to drop back and punt here for just a second. The hand tracker's not really working well for us right now. We It's glitching just a bit, so I might have to have you to drive radar for me um, as we zoom into this system. So here's kind of a broad picture of West Alabama. Now, this storm system right now has produced severe thunderstorm warnings for most of our western counties, but we now have those tornado warnings. As Alex mentioned, the city of Geiger, anywhere along Highway 14, and then up through um, Aliceville and into Carrollton. Reform along Highway 82, so reform back into Gordo. Go ahead and get into your safe spot. Area of rotation is moving into Pickensville as we speak and then clipping just to the north of Aliceville. So that's that initial area that we're looking at for rotation. But again, now pretty much the entire uh, Pickens County is now under a tornado warning, different tornado warnings, but now pretty much everyone in Pickens County needs to practice those uh, uh, safety. So this is a live look from our Gordo Tower Cam. This is along Highway 82. I believe this is one of our LDOT cameras there. And uh, notice the rain, not too bad right now, but I would encourage anyone on the roadways to seek a sturdy shelter. You want to go ahead and try to either get home if it's close by or duck into a convenience store. I know there's a shell station right there on Highway 82 in Gordo, a couple of gas stations. I know they'll be happy to uh, provide you some uh, shelter until this storm passes because it's only about 10 minutes until that storm gets to you. So right now, let me zoom in for you really quickly. So this is our Pickens County storm and as we're tracking this particular storm, this is our uh, velocity. This this to me is right over Geiger right now. I, I want to focus on this one in Geiger for just a moment because this one to me seems as though it could be um, kind of the, the the more pertinent one. Pickensville storm, it's broadened out. So go ahead and make sure that you're in your safe place. But I do want to zip down to Geiger very quickly. So Alex, if you keep your eye on the Pickensville storm, if anything alerts you, let me know. But I'm going to move my attention down to Geiger very quickly because this velocity indicates to me that we are seeing and I want to treat this as if a tornado is on the ground. We don't have any confirmation just yet as we're kind of eyeing the National Weather Service, but this is right over Highway 17 in Geiger, and this is moving north, northeast. These storms are zipping tonight to 55 to 60 mile per hour speeds. So Fair Oaks, Warsaw, and New West Green, and this storm system will continue its motion off to the north, northeast, and it's going to clip the northwest corner of Green County. So if you're in Northern Greene County, anywhere in eastern Pickens County, the southern part of Pickens, really pretty much all of Pickens County right now, because like I mentioned, we're really eyeing two areas of rotation, one of those being in Geiger, right along Highway 17 at this hour. So I just want folks to make sure that you're getting into your safe place. And uh, as we look at our um, Baron button, I want to show you this really quick because it does look like we could be maybe looking at that area of rotation. So the winds are pretty impressive still, uh, exceeding possibly 60 miles per hour in some spots. So we just want folks to make sure that you're staying safe and taking these seriously, regardless of just if it's because of a tornado. But the winds, those are going to be quite strong as well. Look at our shear. I want to show you our shear swath at this time because this is where we really kind of indicate where we're seeing those really strong winds. And notice this entire line right now in Pickens County. So this area that's kind of this brighter green that you see, this is really hugging the state line, but that's where we're seeing those extreme winds. So anytime you start to see those brighter greens on the map, and I know it uh, looks a little slender, but those wind speeds could be anywhere between 45 to 55, 60 miles per hour even. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. And then we've got this area near Geiger where we could be seeing some rotation there as well. Um, so right now, this is our shear swath, and that even extends all the way up into Lamar County and southern parts of Hamilton, uh, excuse me, Marion County, just to the southeast of Hamilton right now. 
Main focus, though, we will focus on these storms where we have these tornado warnings. Two different storms producing two different areas of interest. So this isn't just one system with two different warnings. These are two different systems. So looking back at our reflectivity, one thing I want to point out is these are kind of messy rain wrap storms at this point. We've got a lot of water falling from the sky. You're not going to see some of those traditional features like a hook echo or even Boeing features. We could probably zoom in and see a little bit, but right now there's just a lot of rain falling out ahead of this line and that's going to uh, that's going to disrupt some of the what, what I would call more textbook images that we would get from our radar as far as areas of rotation. So the one thing that I like to look at is our velocity products. So that's that's where we're really looking at those stronger winds. And I, I, I think it's pretty evident, especially down towards Geiger still. So again, two areas. Let's talk about these two areas. We've got one just outside of Pickensville. This one's following Highway 86. It looks to have broadened out just a bit where you see this kind of brighter green on your screen and um, and then kind of that deeper red. So that's going to be following along Highway 86, making its way towards Carrollton. So go ahead and get into your safe place there. But I do want to move uh, move down towards this one in Fair Oaks right now. This is where I think that we could actually be seeing a possibility of a tornado. I really want to treat this as if a tornado is on the ground in this particular um, in this particular one. So folks just need to really watch closely. You need to make sure that you are getting to your safe place right now. And uh, it's important, uh, especially let me let me just see if there's any debris with this. Don't see anything on our debris indicator, but remember uh, debris also uh, may not be picked up in those initial scans. So debris sometimes lags behind because remember if there's a tornado on the ground and it's doing some damage, those, uh, you know, whatever's being lofted, it takes a couple of scans for the radar to detect uh, what's being lofted in the air. So don't depend on our debris indicator for the area of rotation, but utilize it as kind of one of those tools in our toolbox to confirm an area of rotation. So if you're in Fair Oaks, if you're in Warsaw, uh, Ridge, Lewiston, I would go ahead and get to your safe place uh, all the way up towards Gina. So make sure that you are putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And we'll go ahead and track this storm out uh, to Pioneer. And these are the cities that are going to be impacted by the storm within the next, say, 20 to 25 minutes. So Ridge at 837, you have Lewiston at 845. So there's Ridge 837. Lewiston, that's going to be at 845. And then uh, on to Pleasant Grove at 853. And then Pioneer. So you have Pioneer kind of at the edge of this tracking box right now at 858 tonight. And again, this storm system moving pretty quickly, moving at about 50 to 55 miles per hour. So it's moving fast. It's not going to last long. Uh, also, we have several severe thunderstorm warnings and we have this tornado warning in place. Uh, we're kind of monitoring two areas right now, so we'll send it back to the Weather Center with Alex Puckett for more information. Alex? Let's uh, let's make it three now. A new tornado go. warning for Sumter County. This is Living on the southwest Street. side of the county. This is for a confirmed tornado south of Tumsuba. That's going to be moving towards Cuba and York. So if you're watching us in Cuba and York, you've got to get to a safe place. Uh, Weather Service noting, and it's a little hard to see, we're between radar sites, but this right in here, that little blip, that's tornado debris south of Tumsuba, south of I-20. That's going to be making its way north and east. So if you have friends or family down towards Cuba or York in southwestern Sumter County, let them know this is on the way. That is a dangerous storm currently producing a tornado. The good news, Ashley, is everything I see on radar, while this storm is still uh, showing some rotation in Pickensville, Moving up towards Carrollton and reform now, it is not what it was. And uh, we don't have a confirmed tornado on that. Tornado warning still in place. So for Carrollton back up to reform, I want you in a safe place right now because that could spin back up. I don't think it's currently producing a tornado, but it could redevelop and produce another one. Uh, we still have that pretty tight circulation that was near Fair Oaks Farm. That's going to be making its way over towards uh, the Lakewood Hunting Lodge. It's going to make its way over towards um, uh, Barnes Bend. Uh, and back towards Cook's Bend in the Tom Bigby River. So if you live out that way, we want you to get into a safe place. That's north, far northern Sumter County, back into far western Green and northwestern Green County. If you're living back towards Clark, 
Cochrane in far southern Pickens County. Keep an eye on this, but this may pass a little bit south and east of you. And folks back from Aliceville, back down Highway 14 into Greene County, and then extending all the way back out towards Pioneer on the southeastern side of the county. Need to be keeping a close eye on that one. At this point, Ashley, the worst looking storm may be the southern storm. This tends to happen a lot where you uh, get a line of storms like this and, and the southern storm ends up taking over as they continue to push east. But uh, again, everybody under this, these tornado warnings need to be in a safe place. But do want to point out for the folks who may be watching uh, or if you've got friends or family over towards Cuba and York in southwestern Sumter County, you need to let them know to get to a safe place because there is a tornado on the ground in Mississippi that is heading in their direction. Ashley. All right, thanks a bunch, Alex. All right, let's kind of reset the camera really quick, or excuse me, reset our um, our view because as we are diving deeper into the night, I also want to point out how gusty these winds are. Well, Alex and I just stepped outside. We could hear the wind inside of our studio, so it prompted us to walk out to see kind of what was going on. And uh, winds were likely upwards of 60 or 70 miles per hour, and these were just straight line winds. So along I-65 right now from Birmingham, Alabama. Baster Calera points east, you're likely dealing with some very strong what we call gradient winds. These are winds that are really on the front edge of this entire system, but it's before the main line reaches you. So even though winds might be howling, they're not directly associated with the main line. And so I want to point that out because once the winds subside, I don't want you to think, oh, the threat's over and let your guard down. It's really just kind of phase one. Phase Phase two is this more um, potent line that's right at the Mississippi Alabama state line currently. So heavy rainfall currently from Hamilton Sulligent with tornado warnings still effective for northern Pickens County, northern Greene County, and then um, and, and now we're including Sumter County in part of that. So that's that's where our focus is right now. As we zoom in here, I want to show you where we're looking at this um, particular storm system. So yes, it's northern uh, Sumter County, which for the most part are um, our, our TV partners down in the Montgomery market will handle this or um, in East Mississippi uh, because our CBS 42 viewing area will begin in Pickens County, but this storm will be moving into Pickens County and, and we'll notice they just trimmed off the backside of this tornado warning that does include the city of Geiger, but Fair Oaks is still in that towards Ridge. So anywhere along high, Highway 14 from Ridge to Aliceville, get into your safe place. That's really the trajectory of this particular storm system at this this time. So as we zoom out, let me put this track on this storm system uh, as as it's tracking off to the north northeast right now. And I think it's really going to run right along the Pickens County Green County line. So if you live anywhere around um, Ridge, Lewiston, up through uh, Gina, Kirk, I, I would go ahead and get to your safe place. I think Bostick's going to be just a little to the north of that particular system, and Bostick will be sandwiched in between two of these. Uh, still a pretty decent notch on the back of this one system that's moving closer to Highway 82, definitely producing uh, heavy rainfall with that as we are monitoring that closely. Let's look at our storm relative velocity again because there's still a very strong signature on this particular storm system. This one's now just outside of Ridge, sitting on top of Vienna, heading towards Highway 14, just south of Bridgeville. Uh, this one is crossing over the Tom Bigby River as we speak, and this particular storm system, as we kind of circle this, this is the area of rotation, and it's moving this direction. So it's moving northeast at this time, and uh, it does look like this last scan tried to broaden out just a little bit, but it's still quite organized, I'd say. So as we track this, let me put a track on this again. It's going to move just barely south of Aliceville towards Kirk, but I would want to make sure that you're in your safe place in Aliceville, in Beasley, uh, and then up towards Pioneer and Kirk. And here's those arrival times. We have 844 for Aliceville. The time right now is 836. So if you live in Aliceville, Pioneer, Kirk, I want you to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Get to the lowest floor of that house. Go ahead and, and make sure that you're practicing that safety plan. If you do live 
east of Highway 14. You've got just a little amount of time. If you've got about five minutes and you need to get outside of maybe a, if you live in somewhere that's not a site built home, if you live in a mobile home, you want to make sure that you get to something that's much sturdier, a neighbor's house, something that's site built, a convenience store would work as well. Take shelter there until the storm passes. These are moving at a very fast clip of speed. So again, from Beasley, Aliceville, Pioneer, Kirk and Gordo. Go ahead and get to your safe spot. Beasley 851 will be that arrival time. Pioneer 859 with Kirk at 901. Uh, these storms right now are zipping through. They are just now moving into Alabama and, and quite frankly, right on schedule. We've been forecasting this for the last couple of days and this is right on par with when we expected the arrival of this the main line to occur. Had all of that wind earlier today, even this evening, still dealing with wind in East Alabama and now we're transitioning to that severe weather element. So these strong winds being produced along the state line right now. Let me look at our debris signature, see if there's anything else of interest there. Not much going on. So uh, again, if there was or if there is a tornado, it's likely on the weaker end. That does not discount the fact that winds could still easily get up to 70 and 80 miles per hour. So please don't let your guard down. Here's that shear rate. This is a, a product that we have here in house that I think is a, a very good product for us to uh, look at because when you start to see these reds and greens, look at the strong winds along Highway 82. Sometimes we get, uh, I would say, a little complacent when we just only hear tornado warning. We immediately think just tornadoes and we forget that these are also producing fierce winds. These extreme winds can still cause a lot of damage. And I, I want folks to take this very seriously. Treat these warnings, whether you're right over the dot where that tornado warning is occurring or the tornado, I want you to treat treat it like it's a tornado because you need to get inside where we're seeing these bright greens and where you're seeing these deeper reds. These are strong, severe winds. OK, so we're talking wind speeds in excess of 60, 70, possibly miles per hour. This is moving over Highway 82, stretching up to Bethlehem and Shaw. That's who's going to be impacted next by a lot of this wind and just south of Beards Mill at this time. That's going to be moving close to that Highway 17 corridor that runs you north south out of Carrollton to reform and then up into Lamar County. As I zoom out here and kind of move down, that swath continues. So that line of strong wind from Aliceville to Ridge. One thing that I have noticed is this is starting to make a little bit of a curvature. We look at this, if it makes a slight S shape, if it begins to start snaking, that would be an indicator for me that we could be seeing some rotation. So this is in alignment with exactly where that tornado warning is. So again, I want folks from Aliceville Ridge and then all the way um, up through even Gordo to make sure that you are treating this um, as a tornado. So go ahead and get into that safe place right now. Uh, the good news is back towards Clark. You're clear at this point, but we're, what we're looking at right now is the shear. We're looking at those really strong winds there and uh, that's impactful. Here's what it looks like on our what we call reflectivity product. There's nothing necessarily that stands out to me here. We are starting to see this kind of bowing out just a little bit. So you get this little feature right here. So it bows out. You've got some energy moving into the back side of this and that bowing feature on the front end is where we're going to have a lot of those stronger winds. So as I draw that on the map for you, that would be something that would be indicating to me maybe a stronger updraft. Uh, but um, but they're not a lot of very clear, very clear radar signatures for us tonight. This one is bowing out. So the storm system just outside of Aliceville is blow, bowing out as well. Something that we'll keep an eye on there. S starting to see those deeper purples on the screen. Don't think that we're going to be getting a lot of hail out of this system, um, but rain rates right now are pretty impressive. I do want to point those out. We do not currently have any flood warnings, but look at these rain rates anywhere from six and a half to seven and a half inches of rain per hour. And remember, rainfall rates means if the rain, which is falling right now, fell at the same intensity over one full hour, this is how much rain would be collected in that bucket. Now, the rain will not rain that with that intensity for an hour because it's moving, right? But that's the rain rate right now. And when you have rain rates over four, five and six inches of rain per hour, it get it becomes very difficult for that water to run off. Very easy to get ponding on roadways for water to start filling up on the streets and very hard for the uh, infrastructure to, to for that runoff to, to work properly. So 
keep in mind that 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 could be a bit of an issue for any of those lower lying areas because this is falling right over the Tom Bigby River right now. And I know there's a lot of lower lying areas near the Tom Bigby River, a lot of those streets and uh, everything. So if you reach an intersection that's covered by water, turn around, don't drown. But this is significant rainfall right along the Mississippi Alabama state line starting to move into our westernmost counties right now. We've got a lot to watch and monitor this evening. So we'll send it over to the Weather Center right now with Storm Team Meteorologist Alex Puckett. Alex? Uh, I want folks to know that are dealing with power outages right now that, that we're not ignoring you. There are a lot of folks, particularly in Jefferson, Shelby, Walker, Tuscaloosa counties without power. We have 12,000 people in Jefferson County without power right now. 1,500 in Shelby and Tuscaloosa counties. 2,000 people without power in Walker County. This is not related to what is classically severe weather. These are non thunderstorm wind gusts that are taking trees and power lines down today. Uh, most of the power outage we powder power outages we have in the state of Alabama over 32,000 uh, are not related to severe weather that is moving in right now. But uh, again, I want to point out that that we, we have got wind damage across the state before storms even moved in. Uh, again, that's not classically severe weather, but uh, the reason we're here is the uh, tornado warnings in effect uh, at this point for Pickens and northwestern Greene County. I will point out there is a tornado warning for southwestern and or really southern and central Sumter County. If you're watching us back in southern Greene County, um, south of Utah back towards Bology and Forkland. That could be an issue down the road, uh, but uh, the main reason we're here are is for the warnings in for Pickens and for far northwestern Greene County. I think this may be wrapping back up a bit over Aliceville right now. That circulation looking a little bit healthier there, and it's really starting to ramp up on this last scan. This is Highway 14 that runs back towards uh, back towards Columbus, Mississippi, uh, and then back down south into uh, Sumter County uh, through Aliceville. That area of rotation is crossing right now in Aliceville. And uh, again, this is a dangerous storm, could produce a tornado. This is this is probably uh, the, the area of rotation is really close to Aliceville High School right now on the uh, south side of town. Uh, but everybody in Aliceville needs to be in a safe place right now. But this is from basically downtown south along Highway 14. And we're still watching that that broad circulation that's going to be between Reform and Gordo or, or excuse me, west of Reform right now over towards Coal Fire. Uh, that is something we're going to continue to watch at this point. I don't necessarily think that's tornadic, but we'll watch to see if it spins back up. And there is a little spot here on the line as well south of Millport over towards Bethlehem and Palmetto. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this as well, but again, at that point, it doesn't. At this point, it doesn't stand out as tornadic. That over near Aliceville kind of does, and 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 that's that's one that we want you to treat really seriously. So if you're watching us in Aliceville right now, want you to get into a safe place. That is a strong area of rotation. Uh, I don't think we have any debris with this. I don't see anything that stands out as a debris signature. You can see some yellows down there south of where the rotation is, but but it's not co-located with the spin, so that's not going to be tornado debris. Uh, but that is really a dangerous situation. Something to note. I'm going to circle this for you again. It's it's dark outside anyway. I know you wouldn't be looking for this, but we'll circle the area of rotation where it's showing up on radar, and then show you the rain. It is completely wrapped up in really, really heavy rain. You see some purple there showing up on the radar. I don't think that's hail. I think that's just really heavy rain falling right now. So the rain is just absolutely torrential from McMullen back down Columbus Road, down Highway 14 into Aliceville, and then back down to the south into Sumter County. But um, that is your area of rotation. What I've circled right there, that is what could be a developing tornado. So we want you to get into a safe place. We'll pop the, the velocity back up. It may be broadened out a little bit here in the newest scan, but again, we want you in a safe place anyway, because again, it, they can ramp up like this. Don't see anything that immediately stands out as tornado debris on radar, but keep in mind that uh, any tornado that would touch down would have to pick that debris up high enough for the radar to see it. So doesn't mean we didn't have a tornado touch down there. It just means that the radar doesn't see the debris, uh, but uh, very dangerous storm there moving through Aliceville right now. If that holds together, that would come pretty close to Gordo. 
um, and ultimately would make its way into far western Pickens, or excuse me, far western uh, uh, Tuscaloosa County. Again, no warnings for Tuscaloosa County, but just something to keep an eye on if you live back towards Buell. Um, but uh, this will be making its way towards Pioneer, Kirk, Gordo. Uh, with Gordo being really the big town in line there. And uh, if you're watching in Gordo, this will be there probably a little after 9 o'clock. You need to be in a safe place here, though, probably within the next 5 to 10 minutes just to make sure you can get somewhere safe. Uh, you need to be doing that. And again, no tornado warning, but we're going to keep an eye on that storm in Sumter County. Uh, there, there is a tornado warning for Sumter County, but we'll keep an eye on that for Greene County. If you're in Greene County right now, you're under severe thunderstorm warning, but uh, no tornado warning for you at the moment. We're going to watch that, though, and uh, if that changes, we'll let you know. Uh, lots of trees down across the area uh, that are not related to this severe weather. And again, I know there's going to be a lot of people without power. If you lose power this evening, uh, but you want to watch our coverage, you can do that at CBS42.com on your phone or the CBS42 News app. We are streaming live there, so we will keep you up to date there as well. Uh, also want to point out for folks who may be watching us in Marion, Winston, Lamar, Fayette counties, I don't want to leave you out. We don't have warnings in place for you right now. There was a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Lamar, Fayette, and Marion counties. That has been allowed to expire. These storms are still probably producing some winds that uh, could cause some damage. They could knock down some trees. We'll put a uh, track on these. And uh, you can see some of the arrival times there. That line of storms, not severe, but probably producing some wind damage or some damaging winds. It just doesn't meet severe thunderstorm warning criteria, probably closer to 45 or 50 miles an hour. So something to uh, keep in mind there. We just don't have a warning for you. We have to prioritize our tornado warnings in a situation like this. So we're still watching this storm that is uh, now moving on the east side of Aliceville. And uh, there's still a good circulation there. This is going to be east of town uh, and uh, pushing off uh, to the east. This is going to be a little north of uh, only Benevola Road. South of 24 is where the uh, worst of that is right now, lifting off to the east. Uh, this is now east of Highway 17, east of Highway 14. And if it can hold together, this would be an issue potentially for the city of Gordo and for the cities of Elrod and Buell uh, in far western Tuscaloosa County. There is no warning in place for Tuscaloosa County yet, but again, just keep in mind, uh, especially if you happen to live in a mobile home back here towards Coker, Buell, Elrod, west of Tuscaloosa in uh, Tuscaloosa County, if you live in a mobile home, manufactured home, you know it's going to take you a little time to get to a shelter. Start heading there now, okay? Uh, go ahead and get there now before these storms arrive so that you have enough time to get where you need to go. Still a pretty good circulation showing up right now east of Aliceville and uh, approaching the community of Only. And uh, that is, uh, again, pushing east of Aliceville right now. I have not seen any damage reports at this point uh, from Pickens County, from Green, uh, Green County, uh, from any of these storms, which is good news. Hopefully we're getting through this without any damage. We've got lots of damage reports coming in just across central Alabama, but not necessarily storm damage. It's just the winds that we've been dealing with today. And we'll go back and show you uh, what we've got as far as power outages are concerned. That has been a big deal today across the state of Alabama. Right now, 35,000 people without power. A lot of that, most of that is just from the, the non thunderstorm winds that we've seen as we've moved through the day. Uh, in Jefferson County, 16,000 people without power. Of course, Jefferson County, very populous. There's a lot of people in Jefferson County, but uh, again, we've had a lot of power lines go down. That has been an issue today. Earlier today, we had power lines down on I-65. We've had power lines down that have sparked fires. It has been a really just pretty bad day. Despite the fact the sun was out, it felt 
nice and warm, but those winds were really whipping today. 1500 without power in Shelby County, Coleman County, Tuscaloosa County, 2000 without power in Walker County. Now you go a little further to the west and again, these numbers are going to update uh, every few minutes. Uh, so we may see a bit of a bump in Marion, Lamar, Pickens, Sumter. Those numbers not as high. Uh, of course, they're not as populous as Tuscaloosa, Jefferson, Shelby or Walker County. But uh, we're also getting those severe storms moving through right now, so we may see those numbers jump up as the storms move through. And that's something we want to point out. We've had power knocked out, trees knocked down today. That is not our main round of storms. So if you're watching us in Jefferson County and you got trees down, you got power lines down, the worst of the severe weather is still yet to come. So be aware of that. Uh, as we go through the rest of the evening. Again, the reason we're here is going to be these tornado warnings in Pickens County and Greene County. Ashley, what have you got for the latest on those? Yeah, here's the deal. So again, to Alex's point, kind of been talking about all these storms in West Alabama right now. Our focus is right over the city of Beasley down to Aliceville. We're starting to see some better returns on our reflectivity, not necessarily a product that we use uh, a lot. Right now, we really show that uh, velocity, but anytime we start to see some indicators, the last couple of runs, I've noticed that we've started to see a bit more of a well-defined V-notch on the backside here. This is where energy is kind of moving into this storm. Remember, the winds on the backside of this storm are pushing this storm along. So really kind of think about it. I'm the backside of the storm. The winds are literally pushing, physically pushing the storm along. That's why the storms are moving at such a fast clip of speed right now. Crossing over Highway 14 and Highway 17. And then Carrollton, go ahead and get into your safe place. Reiterating Nolan, Kirk, and Pioneer, all places we need to be watching very closely as the storm has just passed over Highway 14. It's now over only in the Pleasant Grove. Pioneer, you're next. So Pleasant Grove, get to your safe place. Pioneer, get to your safe place. This is right over County Road 2 currently, where it intersects Houston Winder Road. You've got Houston Winder Road to the north of the circulation, and then County Road 2 as it stretches down to County Road 63. And uh, right now, that's a, a live look from our uh, storm Team Tower came in Gordo. That's looking along Highway 82 there. I know it's a bit of a small town, but I also want to show you our future cast because these storms are going to be moving closer to that I-65 corridor at around 10 o'clock tonight. So this evening, that's what we'll be watching for. So it'll reach the Birmingham Metro at right around 10 o'clock. The time right now, 854. So within the hour, that's where we're really going to be tracking these storms. The areas that were in blue, that's where we would likely see the strongest storms. That's exactly where we're seeing those strong storms right now. These storms should be, be moving east of I-65 by 11 o'clock tonight. I think that rotation threat does go down as these storms cross over I-65. Heavy rainfall and gusty winds still going to be problematic though, so we don't need to just eliminate uh, the threat because it's not going to be over. It just changes, right, as we move into East Alabama. So from Pell City, Talladega and to Sylacauga at around 11 o'clock tonight, things are going to get pretty messy for you. By midnight, it's Gadsden, it's Anniston, it's Oxford, and then by 12 a.m. to 1 a.m., we've got Roanoke to Wadawi, all the way up through Heflin, Fort Payne, and Center. And by 1 a.m., the brunt of this storm will have moved into West Georgia, followed by a few lingering showers from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. in East Alabama. So, all in all, by 4 o'clock, our threat should be done and over with. Uh, that's good news, right? So, you're kind of uh, getting bedded down tonight, likely watching this active night of weather on fold, but by tomorrow morning, by the time you wake up, the threat will be over. We still have a high wind warning in place. Now keep in mind, Mississippi no longer. We still have East Alabama, though, uh, excuse me, West Alabama with a high wind warning and central and East Alabama with the wind advisory. Wind speeds, that's sustained winds, 15 to 25 miles per hour, but we could get those bursts of strong winds 40 to 50 miles per hour. I believe our peak in Birmingham was 58 miles per hour. This is our current wind gust in Birmingham, 57 miles per hour. That's current, okay? So winds are definitely picking up from Birmingham to Coleman. But remember, the line of thunderstorms is still west of Tuscaloosa right now. So this is not even associated with the main line. So we're really dealing with two active weather situations right now. One of those being extreme winds 
through central and east Alabama, and the other being the strong thunderstorms capable of producing tornadoes to our west. So there's there's a lot going on. That's why we have this weather alert in place until four o'clock tomorrow morning. All types of severe weather are possible. Those damaging winds, tornadoes, likely the flash flooding threat is pretty low because these storms are moving so fast. Uh, but it's something that we definitely on our radar. Uh, no pun intended, but it is. Uh, it's something that we're watching. So let's go back to our radar because I do want to revisit on um, this area because this is looking actually a little bit more impressive in this last scan to me, Alex, um, as we are tracking this storm. This is moving through southern Pickens County right now. As I zoom out, um, there is still, it's a little bit more messy from Stansel to Reform, admittedly. That's a little bit more messy. Bostick, Gordo, Reform. Winds are going to start picking up for you, undoubtedly. But I really want to focus my attention on the southern part of Pickens County right now as this storm is uh, moving just to the north of Pleasant Grove. So anywhere from Pleasant Grove, Kirk, Buell, go ahead and get to your safe place right now. Let me put a track on this system. This is moving off to the northeast. And again, these storms are moving at about 50 miles per hour. Uh, this storm system, here is those cities of impact that we're going to be tracking. So Kirk at 9.06. 912. That particular storm system will be affecting Elrod and then Coker at 918. If you hear or see your name on the screen, Shirley 919 and even the Tuscaloosa Airport at about 923. Now I will say that this the back side of this is very broad. Okay, that's how tracks work. They kind of take into any room for error as we track these storms out. So that's why this looks more like a triangle versus one singular line. Uh, there's a good chance that this storm will move just to the north of the city of Tuscaloosa. But if you are in Romulus, Tuscaloosa, I would go ahead and start at least prepping yourself. Make sure that you're just at least close to a good source for weather information within the next 15 to 20 minutes, okay? It doesn't mean that the warning has been issued for you yet, but uh, there's definitely active weather knocking on your back door. And this is going to be bearing down on Tuscaloosa County within just a matter of moments. And that's where we're wanting to track this particular area of rotation, okay? I'm going to move this over to this side of the screen so we can actually see where that rotation is right now. Uh, so this is where we're looking at this. Um, again, this is basically going to split just between Kirk and Pioneer at this time, making its way from basically Pleasant Grove. So if you're in Pleasant Grove, get to your safe place. Pioneer, safe spot. Kirk, Elrod, Buell, Co Coker, uh, even Romulus. Romulus, you're probably going to be a little on the south side of this storm as it tracks due east, northeast. Uh, but anywhere along Highway 82 from Coker back into Gordo, I would get into your safe place. Reminding you that that safe spot is the lowest floor of your house, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Uh, last scan, intense winds. Wow, look at this, Alex. We're really seeing those brighter greens. These pixels, they almost look like a white on your screen. They're so bright. I'm actually going to uh, pixel query these because I'm very interested how fast. Look at these wind speeds there. We could be talking winds 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. Uh, this could be intense. Now, again, this is elevated, uh, but the winds, even at the surface, are probably somewhere closer to 65 to maybe 70 miles per hour. Those are intense winds. EF0 tornadoes produce winds like that. Uh, so whether they're straight line winds or rotating winds, this is going to be a very dynamic situation here in the southeast corner of Pickens County. Now, uh, looks like they just canceled that tornado warning because in this last scan, what I noticed is that it really broadened out. It actually looks like it's turning into a uh, straight line wind event, to be honest with you. Uh, there's still that area of rotation, and uh, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does look like they just canceled those tornado warnings yep. for our viewing area it, at this time. Those have expired because we hit 9 o'clock here. Uh, I, I will say this, the damaging wind threat is still there very in a much. very big way. So I would say this, Look particularly this. if you, you live in a mobile home, manufactured home, from Gordo back down, especially uh, on the south side of town, uh, if you keep going south and east on 82, you hit, uh, a, 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 you hit uh, um, 
uh, there's a there's an insulation company called Hole in the Wall. They got a, a bass fish on their sign. There's a sign for the Tuscaloosa Bypass, uh, and then you go back down, and then once you get right before you get to the Pickens uh, Tuscaloosa County line, it becomes four lane, and then you head into Elrod. There's a Texaco gas station there. If you're watching us out that way, I would go ahead, particularly if you're in a mobile home or manufactured home, get in a safe place. Go ahead and treat this if you're in a mobile home or manufactured home like you would a tornado warning. And that's going to extend into far western Tuscaloosa County over towards Elrod. If you're watching us out that way, uh, again, the Elrod Texaco sits about right here. It's right over the county line, and 82 becomes a four lane there. Uh, and uh, uh, if you're out that way, back towards the uh, uh, from there to Gordo, you need to get in a safe place. Uh, and the Weather Service in Birmingham is going to do this. They are not going to reissue the tornado warning. They're going to let that go. They are going to issue a severe thunderstorm warning that's going to include parts of Fayette and Tuscaloosa County. So you'll see that pop up on the screen here in just a minute. They have just issued that. They're still watching this closely, though. There's still rotation there. So, uh, again, they may have to come back and revisit this in a minute, but uh, at this point, they're going to go with a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, I still think there could be some wind damage from this storm, though, so treat this seriously. This is going to be one of those days where you get a severe thunderstorm warning, you've still got to treat it seriously. This is going to be basically from Northport back to the north and west in Tuscaloosa County. So this will include Lake Tuscaloosa, this will include far northern parts of Tuscaloosa County. Uh, and then back up into Fayette County. This includes Fayette, it includes Belk, it includes Barry. And this new warning going to go until 10 p.m. So that's going to be the new severe thunderstorm warning in place. They are still watching this closely at the Weather Service in Birmingham. This part of the storm back in here still bears close, close watching. This right in here, and again, this is going to go from Gordo. Uh, really from the center of town back towards uh, Elrod. It's going to cross Highway 82. Really the, the, the worst of the winds here, probably from downtown Gordo back to Elrod, close to where that Texaco station is there on Highway 82. So just past where Highway 82 turns into a four lane, right before you get into Tuscaloosa County, that's where the worst of this wind is going to be. And again, we've got to keep a close eye on this. We have seen that these can start spinning very, very quickly. And they're going to go ahead and go with a tornado warning for Pickens and Tuscaloosa. So just as we said that, they're going to go ahead and go along with it. So new tornado warning coming in. We're going to stick with this. Pickens and Tuscaloosa County. And again, the concern is going to be the same places I called out. If you're watching us in Gordo, you need to get in a safe place. I think the worst of this Maybe on the southeast side of town, but everyone in Gordo needs to get into a safe place. And then from Elrod and Buell and Coker and points north. This does not include Northport. This does not include Tuscaloosa. Sirens may go off there. This is not going to include you. If your weather radio goes off, this isn't for you either. And as we get that new scan in, that's probably what prompted the tornado warning. That looks a little bit more impressive at this point. It's tightened up a little bit. So. Uh, again, Ashley, uh, just yep. as we were talking, they went with the new tornado warning. So, Lake Tuscaloosa, Buell, Elrod, Coker, Gordo, you got to get in a safe place. Ashley. Yeah, here we go. All right, so looking at our wind velocity there from Nolan to Kirk, you can see those bright greens on your screen. I was actually just doing a little uh, radar uh, analysis here while Alex was talking. And, and basically, the big thing here is going to be uh, where we're tracking this rotation. A lot of times these storms are cycling. I know you've probably heard us say this several times. And it's interesting, the last few events that we've had that were these overnight events, they've seemed a bit repetitive in how we're describing these storms. But that just goes to show that the atmosphere does act similarly. So in a lot of these situations, we're dealing with this same um, same type situation. So in this particular uh, case, what we're looking at, this became a very tight couplet quickly, and that's going to be one of the nuances of these storms. We've got a very intense lower level jet, and that's basically this highway that's bringing in this wet, warm air out of the Gulf of Mexico. That provides the fuel to 
these storms, but it's howling too. The wind speeds are incredible tonight, and so all it takes is just a small, a tiny little disturbance in that line of strong winds to create a little kink in that line, and it can quickly spin. And I, I don't like to use the phrase spin up tornadoes. That seems to trivialize maybe the strength or intensity of these storms, but uh, in, in description, they do spin up quickly in the sense of timing, not necessarily in intensity. I'm not necessarily saying that these are not intense, but um, they can happen quickly. These are not going to be long-lived thunderstorms where we see these classic supercell structures. So that's why we want everyone kind of downstream of these storms right now to go ahead and start acting towards active weather if you're close by. Uh, this is just tightened up in this last scan between Gordo and Buell crossing over Highway 82, moving north into northern Tuscaloosa County right now. It will move just to the north of the city of Tuscaloosa and the city of Northport. So uh, with that in mind, this, this storm system is tracking due north, northeast at this hour, and this is really edging up right to the edge of Fayette County and getting close to uh, Walker County and even the northwest corner and far western edge of Jefferson County. County. I'm not suggesting that you're in that warning yet, but when I was talking about getting to that safe place, those are some spots where that needs to happen right now. All right, let's review this because currently, as we're tracking this, actually looks like we're getting some new information in right now. Um, this is the continuation of the tornado warning. And uh, so we'll, we'll, let, we'll let Alex look at that very quickly. I want to look at our debris signature right now. Um, not really seeing anything overly impressive on our debris signature at this hour, but we are definitely seeing a strong couplet here uh, right over the city of Kirk. So I'm going to treat this as if there's a tornado on the ground. And looking at uh, the National Weather Service right now, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like we have had any confirmation, but it does say it looks like there have been some reports of circulation crossing over the interstate at the mile marker 11 or 12. And Livingston Fire has just reported hearing trees snapping in a roar. So that's um, not necessarily related to this, but that just goes to show the veracity of these winds for tonight. Uh, Alex, these last few scans have really uh, been yeah. quite impressive. This, this couplet's tightening up very quickly. I want to put on here uh, just, just to kind of show you the, the winds that we're looking at right now. These are upper, upper level winds, but anywhere between 70 to 80 mile per hour upper level winds, which down on Earth's surface, uh, a little bit slower, but still very intense at this time. I want to show you the track of this storm. So basically from Gordo to Buell and then extending that track out. So this storm's again moving at about 50, uh, 55 miles per hour. Here's some of those cities that are going to be impacted with this particular storm system for tonight. Um, you've got uh, uh, Elrod, is, it's upon you at this time. So go ahead and get to your safe place. Shirley at 916, Brownville at 919, and Samantha at 927. Um, as we're tracking this again, these storms are moving northeast at about 50 miles per hour, and we want to make sure that you're getting to your safe place, that you have time to get to that safe place. So if you're in Brownville or Samantha, you've got just a little time if you need to uh, vacate where you are. If you do not feel safe where you are and you have some time to get to a safe place, whether it's a site built home, a neighbor's house, convenience store, now's the time to do that. We'll send it to the Weather Center. Alex, what are you seeing? Uh, Ashley, I just want to point out the Weather Service in Birmingham noting that they're seeing a debris signature in the storm in Sumter County. That, that's not our DMA. If you watch us in Sumter County, uh, this is I-20 in the northeast part of the county, but the reason I wanted to go for this is this. They're now extending a tornado warning into Greene County. This is going to include Bology and Forkland. So if you're watching us there, you need to get into a safe place. This is a confirmed tornado. This is probably going to include Utah as well. So you'll see that extend out in just a moment. Uh, but uh, a new tornado warning for Greene County. This is a confirmed tornado uh, ongoing in Greene County right now. So we want you to get into a safe place if you're watching us there. We're switching between a few different radar sites here to try and get our best look at this. Uh, and there's your new warning. And this is going to include Utah, Forkland, Bology, uh, all the way back up. It's essentially riding all the way up into I-20. So everybody 
almost everyone in Greene County included in this new tornado warning. This is going to go until 945 tonight. So now working two tornado warnings here. Again, that storm in Sumter County producing a tornado at the moment, according to the Weather Service in Birmingham. And uh, that is going to be near I-20 near the Greene County line. So, Bology, you are under the gun uh, right now. Uh, but everybody from Forkland to Bology to Utah uh, need to be in a safe place right now as this storm moves through. Confirmed tornado with that. And again, Ashley, you were talking about this one in Pickens County. That one is, is of significant concern as well. It looks pretty, pretty rough out there. From Gordo back down to uh, Elrod, uh, that is a really dangerous storm as well. But again, we do have the confirmed tornado right now in uh, moving into Greene County. All right, and uh, we we're gonna kind of revisit this because we're we're hopping around. Look at all of these warnings. I want to do one quick reset, Alex, and then we will. Um, I, I kind of reposition everyone because I'm sure if you're watching from home, uh, two things are happening right now. One, you may not have a warning for your affected area, but boy, are the winds probably picking up for you along I-65 and eastbound, um, or you're in West Alabama where the active line of thunderstorms is barreling across from Hamilton all the way down to Demopolis there in Marengo County. So here's what we're looking at currently. Let's kind of reset our bearings. We've got a couple of tornado warnings to talk about, but I do want to point out that let, let's go back to the one Alex was just talking about as it moves into Green County, as that one does have a confirmed tornado signature with it. Um, Alex, while I look at that, monitor the one in Tuscaloosa. If anything jumps out at you, we can quickly uh, go back to that particular storm system. So uh, I'll, let, I'll let Alex monitor the Tuscaloosa storm. I want to zoom into the one now that's moving into Green County. Here's the interesting thing to note here. This is the same issue that we continually have. Uh, unfortunately, our radar beam is pretty high at this point. So we really have to do some digging with our radar analysis when we're looking at these West Alabama counties, especially near Bology, Bragville. That's where we're really, um, we need to focus our attention in even even up through Utah. This will be right along Interstate 20, okay? Uh, I would really encourage anyone to not be on the roadways right now. If you're listening uh, over the radio airwaves or even just watching a streaming from a device, um, I would encourage you to try to slip off uh, for now on, a, on an exit where there's a convenience store somewhere along Interstate 20 there. I know there's not a whole lot of stops and exits there uh, with places, but please try. But Bology to High Cut right Right now, this is where we would likely see some of that area of rotation. Um, I want to show you our debris signature because I do think we're starting to pick up on that debris. Um, and this is what we're looking at here. I'm going to. Confirmed in Tuscaloosa County. All right, we're going to hop back to Tuscaloosa County right now as this storm is now confirmed in Tuscaloosa County to be producing a tornado. It's moving into northern Tuscaloosa County. There it is. Uh, this storm system crossed over Highway 82, and uh, at this time, it's going to be traveling due north. East. So it's just slightly north of Bel Air Estates, north of Coker. Uh, confirmed tornado on the ground. Let's check our debris signature, see if there's anything. Nothing really popping up right now. Uh, there it is. It just popped up in this scan. So um, that's where we're seeing it. Make sure our, let's see, we'll toggle real quick back between our, um, we've got our Birmingham. There, that, that does look like the debris signature. So again, we use our debris signature more, more or less for confirmation, not necessarily tracking it. So I want to get back to tracking this particular storm. Look at this couplet right here, Alex. This is impressive. And this is heading in between basically Shirley. If you're in the city of Shirley, get to your safe place immediately. Get to your safe place right away. If you're in the city of Shirley, this storm system is moving. It's going to be moving right over you in just a matter of minutes. So if you're in the, in the town of Shirley, this, this is moving right over you. And then this is going to be traveling eastbound towards Highway 171. So State Routes 171. Uh, there's a neighborhood, Montgomery Lakes. Get to your safe place, Brownville. Get into your safe spot. Spot right now, as it continues its move, here's some other city, cities that will be impacted. Samantha, Searcy Farms, Binion Heights, all along Highway 43. 
Now, this tornado warning does not include the city of Tuscaloosa, so not the university, but it is just slightly north of Northport. Doesn't include Northport, doesn't include Tuscaloosa at this time. So, as I zoom out, you can kind of get a bearing. There's Tuscaloosa. It's right on the edge of the severe thunderstorm warning, but the confirmed tornado is in western Tuscaloosa County, and that's where we're um, that's where we're monitoring for things very closely right now. So, as it stands, it appears as though we may have two tornadoes that we're dealing with at this time. All right, this is actually a live look at Highway 43 near Samantha. Let's leave this camera up because things could start deteriorating there very quickly. Uh, it does look like there's some light shining on that intersection, whether it's an emergency vehicle, it looks like a steady lights, or it's just the street lights there. Um, let's go ahead and leave that view there. Uh, I did notice, Alex, in this last scan, look at that couplet. Yeah, it's um, really strong. It's, it's a very strong couplet. So, um, Alex, I may get you to look down south to make sure we're not missing anything just outside of Utah, but I do want to let the folks in Utah know Southern Greene County, get into your safe place right now, likely to be moving into Northern Hill County. So I want folks in Greene County, Utah to Forkland, get into your safe place. That's along Highway 43. Again, another tornado warning there. We're going to go back to the storm because it has confirmation of a tornado warning, uh, a tornado on the ground. Remember, that's not just the funnel cloud coming from the sky. That's a confirmation of a tornado in northwest Tuscaloosa County bearing down on Highway 117, making its way right towards Shirley right now. Here's some city, uh, these are the cities, or that, those are the cities of impact, but the streets, if you are on Tabernacle Road, get to your safe spot. If you are at uh, Beth Barber Road or County Road 190, get to your safe place. Tabernacle Road, that runs you kind of north south there towards Paul Mill Road. Get to your safe spot where we're seeing the green and the reds come together, these pixels there on your screen. That would indicate the best place of seeing that tornado. So that tornado is happening right now over Boyd Road in Tuscaloosa, heading right towards the city of Shirley. As I zoom out here, I do want to kind of give folks an idea of what's happening downstream. Uh, this last scan actually just looked like it weakened slightly, but it could just be cycling. Um, so we don't we don't necessarily need to. Um, think that it's it's over by any stretch. So that tornado warning currently in effect for northern Tuscaloosa County uh, as we're tracking this particular storm. So I'm going to zoom out just a smidge more because what I want to show folks there is uh, kind of where these storms are heading at this time. Uh, so let's uh, let me do this real quick. Let me do a quick track on this. This this particular storm's moving at about 50 miles per hour. So as I track this off to the northeast, here's some of those cities. So you've got Samantha, you've got Wyndham Springs at 929 and 939 respectively. So Samantha sits right on Highway 43. So as you're, uh, as you're watching us, if you hear Samantha, if you live in Wyndham Springs, you've got time, get to your safe place. You've got about 10 minutes before this potential tornado, and it's been confirmed uh, before this tornado would hit you in Samantha or uh, Wyndham Springs. So you want to make sure that you are taking action right now. Actually, do you see the rain picking up on our, uh, our, our camera there in Tuscaloosa County? This is our uh, camera there in Samantha on Highway 43. The rainfall is really picking up in intensity. I want to show you what that looks like just very quickly on our reflectivity. So here's that heavy rainfall moving through Brownville, Love Hub, and moving closer into Samantha. So the area that you see highlighted in red, that would indicate we're likely that rain is starting to pick up in intensity right there on Highway 43. You saw the lightning there. Uh, we can actually put our lightning on. I took it off for just a moment, starting to see a few more frequent bolts of lightning with this particular system. Uh, to add to this, let's send it over to the Weather Center with Storm Team Meteorologist Alex Puckett. Alex? Yeah, actually, I just want to give a couple of landmarks here, and, and I'll show this. This is State Highway 171 that runs through here. This runs from uh, Brownville uh, back down to the south, right at this bend here is the old Brownville uh, food uh, and gas station there. 
And then just up the road over here is the Volunteer Fire Department, Montgomery Volunteer Fire Department. So if you're watching us out there, you need to get in a safe place. I will say this, Ashley, we've still got that debris signature there. It may have become a little displaced. I say that. I think it's still there. So, uh, again, this is still a confirmed tornado, and this is going to be very close on Highway 171. It's going to cross really, really close to the old Food and Deli gas station, the old Brownville Food and Deli gas station, and the fire department. That's uh, right there off of, uh, I believe it's off of Highway 35. So if you're watching us there, uh, you need to get in a safe place right now. And then eventually, uh, you've seen us pull up that camera from time to time in Samantha. Samantha, you're the next town under the gun once we get past Brownville. So you need to be getting into a safe place right now as well. Ashley. Uh, it looks like a second TDS there. So uh, confirmation of a tornado uh, on South 171, southwest of Samantha. So, in fact, it looks like this is going to be holding together as a tornado. This is heading towards Samantha right now. Let me zoom back out. I'm going to switch back over to our storm relative velocity because that's where we're getting reports of that, that uh, tornado. Again, let me zoom back into this right over Brownville at this time. And uh, this would be heading towards Montgomery Lakes and right along 171. So that's exactly where National Weather Service re reported another confirmation. So on uh, 171 South. On uh, right there, southwest of Samantha. So you have Samantha on the screen here. If you see where I'm pointing my finger, so that's on Highway 43. So just southwest, where you're seeing this red and the green come together on Montgomery over Montgomery Lakes. This is where that tornado is occurring right now, crossing over 171. All right, Montgomery Lakes, between Montgomery Lakes and Samantha, get into your safe place. Uh, you, you really don't have any time except to take immediate action at this point uh, and stay, stay kind of where you are. Uh, it, does, it does look like to the north it could be another area that's starting to try to rotate there near Moore's Bridge. So uh, that's something to keep an eye out on. I think it could also be some very strong winds associated with this particular storm system. That couplet, though, a bit more impressive over 171. Let me show you our debris signature because we are starting to get some uh, very clear signals. Look at that debris signature. This this is definitely confirmed. So, uh, all right, the image that we're looking at right now is Highway 171 and Highway 43. So, to kind of put that in perspective, that's going to be just slightly south of where we're seeing it. So, this is where our camera is that we're double boxed with right now. So, that rainfall is heavy at this time, and this storm system is occurring slightly to the north. So, that debris indicator, remember, we use the debris indicator as a way to confirm a tornado is on the ground. We don't use a as a forecasting tool, but as a confirmation tool. Anytime we see those oranges, yellow, greens, and blues, it's a definite indicator for us. So, uh, undoubtedly, unmistakably, there is a tornado on the ground over Montgomery Lakes in Tuscaloosa County along Highway 171. And remember that debris signature oftentimes might just be a scan behind the actual center of circulation. So, don't don't look at that green dot to think that's where the actual storm is. That storm might be slightly ahead of that, but right now they're lining up pretty much on top of each other. All right, so that's where that area of circulation will be just to the east of Montgomery Lakes. And this particular storm system is traveling due east, northeast over Harless Road, currently over Brown Road, and then making its way over Harless Road, and then making its way towards Fawcett Drive, and then eventually ending up along Highway 43, basically just to the north of Samantha. So if you're anywhere on Brady Montgomery Road, Bart Brown Road, North Side Road, get to your safe place. All of these roads connect to Highway 43. So if you hear my voice, uh, maybe you're away from the TV and you can't see. That's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna to call all these out. So if you're in your safe place, just crank that volume up or you can watch this on your device. We are streaming live on our app or head over to CBS42.com. All right, so North Side Road in Tuscaloosa County. This is due west of Highway 43, North Side Road, Bart Brown Road, Brady Montgomery Road, and Old Fayette Road. If you are on those roads, go ahead and get to your safe place. 
right now. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And if you live on Highway 43 from Samantha and anywhere north of Samantha near Skelton Bend's estate, and then um, even along Highway 69 towards Wyndham Springs, go ahead and get to your safe spot right now. We are tracking a, a tornado on the ground. We do have confirmation of that tornado on the ground. I'm going to revisit our debris signature. Very well defined debris signature. So confirmed tornado. Uh, we want folks to stay safe, stay in your safe place. Uh, do not get out of that safe place right now. Uh, anywhere from Samantha to Wyndham Springs up towards Gorgas. And then Wiley, we want you to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Get to the lowest floor of your house at this point. This is a serious situation, folks, in northern Tuscaloosa County. Now, the city of Tuscaloosa, you are not included in this, okay? City of Tuscaloosa, not included. And you'll notice in this box next to me, this is rain that is picking up in intensity, and the wind is going to be picking up as well. This is our camera that's located at the intersection of 171 and Highway 43 in Tuscaloosa County. That's slightly south of where the center of circulation is right now. It's near Old Fayette Road. Uh, I'm watching this debris signature. That's where we're seeing uh, most likely this area of rotation happening and this tornado on the ground. All right, let's go back to our velocity product right now because this is still holding together even with our last scans. Um, so I'm going to collapse this box down here. This is our severe thunderstorm warning, but let me, let me get rid of that for just a second so we can focus in on this uh, tornado warning for us. So here's where we're looking at this area of circulation. This has now moved beyond Brownville uh, and just to the northeast of Montgomery Lakes. The last scans bringing this along Highway 43. If you're in Samantha, get to your safe spot. If you're along North Side Road, get into your safe spot right now. Haygood Chapel Road, get into your safe place. Wyndham Springs, take proper action right now. Gorgas, get into your safe spot. So if I've called out your city, if I've called out your street name, take action immediately as this storm system does have history of producing a tornado at this time. So again, the city of Gorgas, the city of Wyndham Springs, the uh, community of Skelton Bins Estates, that's a neighborhood, and then down towards the city of Samantha, right along Highway 43, you need to make sure that you're getting into your safe place. This is a confirmed tornado on the ground, okay? If you're just now tuning in, we are tracking an active night of weather across central Alabama, and right now we are tracking an active tornado on the ground in northern Tuscaloosa County. Um, Alex, do you have any more information coming in I, from the National Weather Service? Uh, I don't have anything at this point. Okay. I do want to point out, uh, we do have something uh, north. Uh, this, is, uh, this is from uh, Sumter County. Uh, a lot of trees down from that storm. That's now what's moving through Greene County. I do want to point out, if you live anywhere near or north of Northside High School in Samantha, you've got to get in a safe place. So from the Chevron and the high school there, back up towards Campground United Methodist Church along Highway 43 up to Campground Road, uh, or off to the east towards the, uh, the, uh, lumber, uh, the lumber and sawmill uh, over there uh, off of North Side Road, off of 53. You have got to get in a safe place. This is a confirmed tornado, and this is going to, if it misses North Side High School, it's going to be close. North Side High School sits right here, right here, at North Side Road and Highway 43. The circulation was very close to there. It may have uh, uh, jogged just a hair north. Uh, looking at the debris signature, the good news is we may have lost it there in our last scan, so that would be fantastic news. But uh, we'll have to be looking for damage there from Highway 43 West. And again, that circulation is still there, so we still want folks in a safe place uh, up Highway 43 in Tuscaloosa County, uh, back towards, uh, and ultimately, you know, we'll have to watch this for parts of uh, Walker and Fayette if it holds together. Ashley. All right, thanks, Alex. Yeah, just kind of reviewing what the National Weather Service was talking about. And, and to your point, we don't have a lot of extensive chatter, which sometimes is actually good news uh, because that means there's probably not a lot of imminent danger, but it does take a little while to get this information out. We want to make sure that anyone in the path of this storm, though, is taking those steps to get into their safe place. This is holding together, again, a confirmed tornado on the ground heading straight to the city of Gorgas. If you are in Gorgas, immediately get into 
your safe spot. You don't have a chance to get out. Don't try to chase this. Don't try to drive away from the storm. Get into a sturdy structure and try to um, just hunker down until this particular storm passes. It's crossing over Highway 43 as we speak, south of New Lexington into Gorgas. So, uh, again, New Lexington to Gorgas. I'm going to draw this out here so folks know exactly where we're looking at. So, New Lexington and then along Highway 43, there's Gorgas. This storm system is traveling north, northeast. It's moving at 50 miles per hour. So, Wiley, you're going to be on the southern track of this storm. Wyndham Springs, go ahead and get into your safe place. Although the trajectory of rotation for this storm is likely going to be just to the north of Wyndham Springs, let's go ahead and play it safe because any slight jog to the right, sometimes these storms like to become right movers. Um, Wyndham Springs would immediately become in the path of that. I don't want you to have to be reactive. I want folks in Wyndham Springs to be proactive. Same with Wiley. Go ahead and get into your safe spot right now. All right, I'll, uh, I'll uh, kind of collapse my telestrate there. Let me zoom back out. Sandtown, you're next. Notice the warning has not been extended yet, so it does not include Walker County, and it does not include any of Jefferson County, um, and it likely won't include any of Jefferson County for now, um, so we'll, we'll just be watching that, and it's not going to, it's going to clip Southern Fayette, but right now it doesn't look like uh, that warning has been extended just yet. So if anything, uh, southeastern Fayette and western Walker County need to prepare for this storm. We're trying to give folks enough runway to go ahead and start being proactive about this particular line of thunderstorms. This one's now producing quite a bit more lightning. The frequency of lightning that we're seeing also indicates that this storm is intensifying. The more lightning we see, the more energy that's there. This is right over Gorgas as we speak. This is traveling northeast, and it's kind of sharply moving northeast with these last couple of scans. So it's just now crossed over Highway 43, moving between New Lexington and Gorgas, heading towards Sandtown. If you're in New Lexington, be in your safe place. If you're in Gorgas, stay in your safe place. West of High Highway 43, so back towards Moore's Bridge, Love Hub, you're good. You can, um, you can, you're out of the danger of this tornado warning right now. Same with Brownville, you're in your safe place. Equila, you're in your safe place, or you, you can come out of your safe place now. Uh, you're safe. From this storm at this point. All right, going back to the storm in Gorgas, it looks like with each of these scans, though, it's really holding together as far as this rotation. Um, it's not as uh, as tight of a couplet as it was maybe five minutes ago, but the wind gradient still is quite impressive, 60 to 70 miles per hour in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Uh, but remember, as you kind of lower to Earth's surface, you, you those weaken slightly, um, but we could still be getting wind gusts of 50 and 60 miles per hour with this. So uh, watching for that rotation, that rotation right now would be occurring from New Lexington to Gorgas, right over Highway 43. This is going to be slightly north of Samantha right now, but Samantha, you're still in that tornado warning, so uh, go ahead and just stay in your safe spot for now, although the area of rotation will likely be just to your north. The focus right now for that rotation is between New Lexington and Gorgas across Highway 43 as the storm moves towards Sandtown, and then this is going to eventually clip just to the north of Wiley and then towards Whitson along Highway 69, and then Browntown. So uh, right now, I expect this storm system to kind of hug right along the Fayette County, Tuscaloosa County line. But with this last scan, it still looks like that couplet's holding together. So we're still seeing good amount of rotation with this particular system. Um, I'm going to send it over to the Weather Center now with Storm Team Meteorologist Alex Puck Puckett. Alex, what are you seeing? Uh, I want to do a little bit of a... Uh, uh, Talk about a couple other storms here. We're going to come right back to you, Ashley. Uh, something that's not in our television markets, in the Montgomery television market, but something I want folks in Bibb and Chilton counties to be aware of is a tornado warning for Perry County. And so if you live west of Maplesville, uh, south and west of 82 in Chilton County, and then in southern Bibb County, so we're talking Brenton Centerville there, uh, and points to the east, you need to keep a close eye on this storm. That's a very strong rotation there south of Marion in Perry County. Uh, also want to point out we're still watching this rotating storm in Greene County. This has been riding up I-20. We have not heard from the Weather Service whether this will get extended north and east. If it does, this would be a warning that could include parts of Hale and Tuscaloosa counties. So 
Uh, that is something we'll have to watch pretty closely, uh, but also want folks to be aware of that Perry County warning. Again, that is the Montgomery television market, but that goes all the way up to the Bibb and Chilton County lines. That's something we're going to have to keep a close eye on down the road. So as that starts to get close to our market, we'll keep a, a good close eye on that. Let those of you in Bibb and Chilton counties know what's happening there. If you live in southwest Tuscaloosa County, basically south and west of downtown Tuscaloosa, uh, I would start thinking if you're at a mobile home, or a manufactured home about where you're going and maybe start heading towards a shelter before this warning gets issued, especially if, especially if you're down south, uh, uh, down south and west on I-20 uh, back towards Greene County, because this warning, if it does get extended, you, you need to give yourself plenty of time to get where you're going. If you're in a site built home and you know you're going to seek shelter in your house, either in a basement or in the lowest floor, in a closet or a bathroom, you can stay put for the moment. Uh, but if you're going to a storm shelter, I would start doing that now if you're south and west of Tuscaloosa uh, because of uh, the way that storm looks and just to give yourself enough time to get where you need to go. Uh, Ashley, uh, uh, I'll send it back to you because we do have that tornado warning still in effect for northern Tuscaloosa County. This could be a Fayette and Walker County issue if it, if it holds up. Yeah, my personal opinion is this thing is holding together. So I have, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and encourage anyone in Southern Fayette County, if you are watching us right now, I would highly encourage you to start taking those steps to get into your safe spot because the last few scans of this have not let up, okay? Um, and that's important to note because a lot of times with these storm systems, it's only two or three scans where that signature remains intact. And this has remained intact a good ways now as it moved out of Pickens County, moved into Tuscaloosa County. This storm has history of a confirmed tornado. So we are going to continue to treat it as though it is a confirmed tornado on the ground. Now, this storm could be lifting just a bit and then setting back down, lifting and going back down. That's a very real possibility at this point. We had confirmation through our debris signature. We also had visual confirmation. So from the National Weather Service, they're uh, getting some further validation of this uh, particular system. So this is just now past New Lexington. This is heading up towards Bowley Springs and Barry. No Notice, though, over the last few scans, it's taken kind of a sharper move to the north. And uh, with that, uh, we're going to change our positioning of where we tell folks to be safe. So, Wyndham Springs, you're now in the clear from this tornado warning. Wiley, you're technically within this polygon. I would still treat this as a tornado warning if you're in the city of Wiley, although the center of circulation will likely stay just to the west of you. Um, it's, it's going to probably be uh, you know, a handful of miles between New Lexington and Wiley at this point. But Wiley, go ahead and treat this as a tornado on the ground for you. Sandtown, same. Bowley, and then uh, Bowley Spring, excuse me, over towards Barry and Alta all need to start getting into their safe place. Tornado warning hasn't been issued. This might be broadening out into becoming a much bigger wind event. Uh, regardless of the tornado, I always have said for today, we need to really take the severe thunderstorm warnings as seriously as the tornado warnings because these particular systems could produce 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gust, which is the equivalent to an EF0 tornado. And that's also the equivalent to uh, almost hurricane force winds. So we're talking 75 mile plus uh, hour per wind. So uh, this, this is definitely an intense situation. Uh, there is some broadening out. The couplet is still there. It's a little bit more broad than we did see uh, prior to. So uh, this is likely why the National Weather Service is not going to be extending this warning into Fayette County. But things are about to start howling. The extreme winds from Barrie to Bully Springs is serious enough for me to kind of hang on with this for just a second. In the event that we start to see the storm cycling just a bit, we've seen this movie before. Uh, we see a couple of scans that show maybe some weakening, and then the next thing you know, it's producing a tornado. So we want to make sure, even though the tornado warning is not in effect for Southern Fayette County, we want you to start treating this as though um, it is that serious of a situation as well. So go ahead and just put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. We're watching several areas tonight as this line of thunderstorms barrels through. Let's just do a quick reset, all right? So let me show you where we're seeing the rain, uh, where we're dealing with a lot of this activity. Here's where things get messy for us. 
Heavy rainfall now beginning to move along that I-65 corridor, but the brunt of this storm is still back in Tuscaloosa County. Fayette County, Northern Walker, now moving into Winston County. We'll likely begin to see cities like Hamilton, Sullivan, and Fayette starting to see some improvements. The rain is starting to dwindle there um, as this line has now passed Hamilton, Sullivan, and Fayette. So you're in the clear for the rest of the evening. Might be dealing with some rain, but you're no longer going to be dealing with this active line of weather. All right. Tornado warning, Tornado warning in Walker County. I just saw that. All right, so just as we were mentioning, so this particular storm that we've been tracking, it's now going to be making its way into Barrie. Uh, this is actually going to be eastern Fayette and northern Walker County. So it's exactly where we said that that would occur. So the city of Barrie, this is crossing over Highway 43. It will include the city of Barrie. It will include Carbon Hill, and it's going to just be west of the city of Jasper. So if you are in Walker County, if you're around Smith Lake, you might be hearing these sirens go off. Note that the warning right now is for the northwest corner of Walker County. So west of Jasper along Interstate 22 up to Carbon Hill and then back down Highway 43 to the city of Barrie. That's where we're seeing that area of rotation. Let me go ahead and put our reflectivity back on here and we're going to zoom in because as mentioned before, although we might start to see um, this is definitely starting to tighten back up just a bit where we're seeing the red and the greens come together on your map. And this right now, right over the city of Barrie, right along Highway 18, if you, if you live in Alta, Salem, or Bully Springs, you need to get into a safe place immediately. Also, the city of Corona, this will be just to the west of Oakman, uh, but you do need from Penley, Cole Valley, and then moving up towards Townley, and then over to Hillard, uh, Hilliard, please get into your safe spot uh, right now. So again, along Highway 18, and this is going to be basically between Highway 18 and Highway 118 from Pocahontas to Oak Hill along Interstate 22. Okay, so Interstate 22 is kind of the top end of this warning, but that warning even extends all the way to the northern part of that Walker County line. So it includes Interstate 22 and then even goes further north to Marigold, Lupton, and Flatwood. But let's look at where that center of circulation is right now. If you're on the northern side of this warning, you um, you have some time to get to a safe place. So if you are somewhere where you do not feel safe right now, you do have time to get to your safe place, whether that be um, whether that be a sturdier structure, a neighbor's house, or even a shelter. If you are familiar with where shelters are in your community, you can also go over to CBS42.com. We have a list, a comprehensive list, of where all the storm shelters are across central Alabama. Or an Alex Puckett put that together for us, so um, so that information is available on our website. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this track for just a second because I do want to put a track on this particular storm. As we track this out, these storms are moving at about 50 miles per hour. So here's some cities of impact. Pea Ridge at 947. The time right now is 942. Uh, let's kind of, I, I'm going to zoom in because we can actually get a few more towns in here. So I'm going to zoom in here to Barry. So this area of rotation right over Barry, right over Highway 118, making its way towards Alta right now. And then Corona, you're next followed by Coal Valley, all right? So let's, uh, let me circle this for us because this is where we're seeing that circulation. So you've got Barry, you've got Alta. This is going to cross over 118, heading towards Coal Valley. And then as we track this, so we'll track this off to the north here, and um, here's some of those cities that we'll see in the impact. I'm going to focus mostly on the northern side of this track here. So Salem at 947, Corona at 949, 952, Coal Valley, Oakman at 953, okay? So Oakman, you're just going to be slightly outside of our warning box here, but I do want uh, folks kind of on the edge to be mindful of any quick changes to the direction of this particular storm system. We've got some new info coming in, and I'll send it over to the Weather Center with Alex. What you got? Actually, I just want to briefly touch on this, and then we'll get back to you. This is the Montgomery TV market, but uh, this is important. East of Marion and Perry County, uh, likely a strong tornado on the mm. ground right now. If you're watching us near or west of Maplesville in Chilton County and from Brent South in uh, Bibb County, and you're in a mobile home or a manufactured home, start thinking about where you need to go right now. That is a strong tornado. If you are living, if you live in western Chilton, far southwestern Chilton County, 
far southern Bibb County and you live in a mobile or manufactured home, start making your way to a storm shelter or somewhere that is site built now. That is a dangerous, dangerous storm. That is probably the most dangerous storm in the map. Uh, so I'll, I'll send it back to you, Ashley, but I want folks to be aware of that because that is going to most likely be a problem for far southwest Chilton and far southern Bibb County uh, within the next 30 minutes. Okay, and I have it pulled up really quickly. I was doing just some quick radar analysis here because, again, if you are in the city of Brent or in southern Bibb County, we want to make sure that you are uh, taking proper precautions. As a meteorologist in, in the Montgomery market for many, many years, I know this area very well. And uh, this is from Highburger through Sprott, Radford, along Highway 14. And uh, it does look like it could potentially be a serious situation. Just for a little perspective here, this particular storm is moving at about 50 miles an hour. But what we have, uh, I'm going to show you our distance from the center of circulation to Bibb County is only 11 miles. So you only have about 15 minutes before this is reaching Abercrombie. So if you are in Bibb County, go ahead and start making your way into a safe place because if this particular storm system holds together, you'll want to make sure that you are getting to your safe spot. So you might be familiar with Oak Mulgee there. Uh, go ahead and get to your safe place. Uh, again, th that's a little bit outside of our viewing area, but only about 12 miles from where this center of circulation is into southern Bibb County. So this is moving out of Perry County right now, which is technically in our Montgomery uh, viewing area. But that's that's something that's important to note for our Bibb County viewers. So in the city of Brent along Highway 5, southern Bibb County, go ahead and start moving your way into a safe and sturdier structure. Alex, I, I think there's some good news here. I was going to say that cell west of Brent bears watching too. That may be tightening up. Yeah, I did actually see that. So notice that deeper red on the screen just outside of Mertz and Spencer. That's where we are going to take note of some stronger winds, especially regardless of the rotation. The T word, as I like to say, uh, this is definitely producing some pretty extreme winds, likely with wind gusts upwards of 50 miles per hour potentially. Alex, I'm going to actually show our wind gust map very quickly because I want people to be reminded of the fact that um, ahead of this storm, we are also dealing with intense winds. So even though that line of thunderstorms is inching closer to 65, it's still from Jasper down through Tuscaloosa along I-65. Look at the wind gusts in Coleman right now, 43 miles per hour. Gadsden reporting winds at 33, clocking in at 36 to 37 miles per hour in East Alabama. So strong winds are Howling across central Alabama right now, especially that northeast quadrant of our viewing area. So uh, just bear that in mind because as winds pick up, I know it's very easy to associate those strong winds with the direct storm, uh, but right now, uh, most of that activity is still back into Tuscaloosa. Still a little area I'm kind of interesting um, just to the southwest of Tuscaloosa, too. Not, not incredibly well defined. Um, some good news, as I was mentioning just a moment ago, uh, is, is it does look like this latest scan, scan over Barry and Oakman has actually started to broaden out a bit. That means when we use terminology like broadening out, it may actually be improvement. It doesn't mean that uh, we're seeing that well-defined center of circulation anymore, that area of rotation. So that's actually a um, welcome sight to see as we are revisiting these scans. This has actually become a bit messy, to be honest. It's right over P Ridge, Cleveland, and Barrie. But notice that area where the reds and the greens are coming together, kind of how broad that is. The fact that I can name four cities within that area of rotation, um, that shows to me that you're not dealing with a, um, a, a pinpoint tornado. There's probably a larger air mass of rotation currently occurring. Alex, do you see anything on there? Um, any other confirmation in uh, for that storm right there, or do you think it's broadening out quite a bit? I, I think it has broadened out a bit, but, uh, but again, I will say this for the folks in Bibb County, you need to be on guard now. I, uh, the good news is I, I do think that we, we still have that debris signature in Perry County, but I think it's a bit displaced now. So uh, something we'll point out, I'm going to circle that debris signature. It's that, that blue circle, the blue and green circle right here. But we pop on the velocity product, it's, it's not in the same spot anymore. Your circulation's right here. So that debris is displaced, and that usually means the tornado has lifted. Now, that doesn't mean it can't touch right back down. And something else I'll point out, if you're watching us in Bibb County, uh, this is south of Highway 82, that circulation mm -hmm. is starting to develop too. So that's something that uh, folks need to be aware of. 
Um, basically from Brent West on 82. You need to be uh, keeping an eye on that. Bibb County needs to be on guard. We do have a new severe thunderstorm warning that's going to include Hale, Tuscaloosa, and Bibb counties. That's going to be for this batch of storms here. This does include the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport. So we've, we've kind of told you so far that Tuscaloosa and Northport haven't been under the gun. You now are. But this is for a severe thunderstorm warning. And again, the potential here for some damaging straight line winds. The worst of this probably on I-20 right now. And I would bet, based on the radar signature here, south side of Tuscaloosa. So Skyland south towards Devondale and Inglewood. This is about to get really rough really fast uh, as that moves to the north and east. Everybody in downtown Tuscaloosa needs to be un uh, prepared for some damaging winds. But you can see the shear rate there. It's popping up again. That's for Bibb County. And uh, that's that storm that we've been keeping a close eye on. There is rotation there. The Weather Service is watching it. Uh, they don't have a tornado warning on it yet. But uh, again, if you are in Bibb County, uh, you need to uh, be on guard. And I, I would advise if, if you are in a mobile home or manufactured home, go ahead and get into a shelter now. Don't wait on a tornado warning. Uh, go ahead and get there right now. That's still a good circulation in. Um, in Perry County, and that would be moving into southern Bibb County, probably, as you said, Ashley, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, maybe even a little less than that at this point. So you need to be prepared for that. We just lost a tornado warning for Fayette and, J and Walker. So at this point, let me double check here. I don't have a tornado warning in central Alabama, in our, our viewing, viewing area. area. I should clarify that. In our viewing area, Perry County has a tornado warning. Uh, that is for the Montgomery television market. But uh, it may be pertinent here, actually, to stick with this for a few more minutes because of that circulation that's developing in Bibb County we'll and that storm out. in Perry. I, I sliced through the storm, Alex, so I, I kind of put it in our 3D volume scan right here. So what we're looking at is kind of the, the cross section of these storms. And notice the Tuscaloosa tower cam right now. That lightning is really picking up. But what I want to point out is these are relatively shallow storms. I've picked the tallest part of this thunderstorm uh, moving out of Perry County, moving into Bibb County, and it's, I say only, it's only 30,000 feet. That's still as high as the uh, aircraft fly. Uh, but a lot of times, with especially summertime storms, you're talking 40, 50,000 feet. So they can be much taller. But as I scan through, even um, the, the rainfall is falling anywhere between 10 to 15,000 feet. So these are not incredibly tall thunderstorms. They get much taller, of course, where you get those areas of circulation potentially and those stronger updrafts. So we look at the height. There's one. It kind of spikes right there. That's right over northern Perry. It's tilted in nature, which would indicate strengthening right there. Um, and, but, but again, still, by and large, Tornado these are... warning for Bibb and Tuscaloosa. All right, just as we had talked about. So let's get right to the maps, and I'll reset our, our, um, our kind of our our radar product here. So let's go back here and uh, we'll do a quick reset. Actually, this map shows kind of pretty well. So where you see the orange blinking counties, those polygons are severe thunderstorm warnings. At this point, I would treat them all like tornado warnings. Whether they're capable of producing heavy rain and strong winds, tornado or not, they're going to create some damage. Power outages will likely be widespread and just you just saw that red polygon pop up. That is our new tornado warning. So we'll get right to the maps right now, and I'll show you on our radar what that looks like. All right, going to our Birmingham radar currently. Heavy rainfall, though, so a lot of these storms are incredibly rain-wrapped. But let me go ahead and zoom in to this particular storm system. And this is going to be just to the west of the city of Tuscaloosa, but it will include Vance. So this is going to be very close to where the Mercedes plant is um, on along Interstate 20, Highway 31. You're also, or Highway 11, excuse me up towards Lakeview and then down into West Blockton along Highway 82 and Highway 5. It does include uh, really the edge of the city of Brent. If you're in Brent, I would go ahead and get to your safe place. Again, this is a confirmed tornado. Even in this reflectivity product, this actually looks much more pronounced than any other reflectivity signatures I've seen in tornadoes for tonight. So this is a very impressive scan. This is something that folks need to take very seriously. Look how well defined this is. We've got two areas that we're looking at. The one right over over Brent. We're going to focus on that one, okay? So there's really two. I think that there it is. That tornado warning just popped up for Southern Bib, Alex. Yep. So kind of, okay. 
So again, we're going to be dealing with two. I'm going to bounce back and forth. We want to let folks in Bibb County know all of you are important to us. And pretty much at this point, the entirety of Bibb County is under a warning. It's for two different tornadoes, though. So uh, be mindful of that. Don't, don't just consider it just one tornado and, ah, oh, it's to my south, I'm fine, because there's one north of Brent and one south of Brent, both right along Highway 5. So two tornado warnings have just been issued for Bibb County, and that's going to include northwest Chilton County as well, from Maplesville up to Jemison. Interstate this, 65 is included in that as well. This is on the ground, Ashley. On the ground. Uh, in Brent or... Uh, Northern the southern one. The southern one. So, okay, yeah, so I'm let's sorry. go to that couplet really quickly. Likely hearing that lightning here at our TV, or thunder rather, here at the TV station. Lightning is really starting to pick up. So we have confirmation tornado on the ground. This is going to be just slightly north of State Route 183. I need everyone to take this very seriously. This is moving out of northern Perry County. This is going to be moving into southern Bibb. If you're anywhere from Abercrombie to Active, along Highway 82 towards Cox and Campbell. Get into your safe place right now. Again, tornado on the ground, northern Perry County. This particular system, let me look at our debris signature really quick to see where this is. Um, so we are getting a little bit of a return. Uh, it's not overly impressive right now. Just slightly off from where the actual rotation is, though. So it's, that, it's that northern blob there. So here's where that is, and that's yep. where that debris signature is being located. So there's there's it's that. that it's that northern just so, west of Pine Tucky. Okay. That so, one there. Yeah. That's small. So. So not, not overly um, impressed. You know, we look at the greens and blues on the screen, but we're going to watch this one. Um, again, we'll go back to our velocity product because that one gives us a good idea of where this is. So this is, again, uh, Pine Tucky heading towards Oak Mulgee. This is all in Perry County. And, yes, even though Perry County's outside of our viewing area, if you're in Bibb County, if you're in western Chilton, you know exactly where these locations are. So from Maplesville, Cox, Campbell, Active, get into your safe place. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Seriously. Situation is developing here. I, I want to just hit on the storm north of Brent as well because lots of rotation there. This is traveling across 82, so it just crossed over 82, heading towards um, Highway 5 at this time. So um, at this point, we want to make sure that everyone along Highway 5, anywhere from Highway 11, the city of Vance, Lakeview, down south into Brent, and even northern Perry County, the city of Oak Mulgee, and Pine Tucky, that you are in your safe place, that you've gotten to the lowest floor possible in your home. You put as many walls between you and the outside as possible, and you're staying away from windows right now. This is a serious situation. These storms are going to be moving close to Shelby and Chilton County. And Chilton North Northwest Chilton County is in this warning. This last scan is very impressive for this southern storm too. So I'll actually I want to zoom into that one, Alex. Alex, if you'll monitor the one north of Brent, if anything okay. pops up, um, I'm going to stay on this one since this one's likely continuing on the ground right now, moving out of Perry County from Vic Trio to Active along Highway 82. Get into your safe place immediately. Antioch, Oakley, Bibb Mill, Randolph, all in your safe place, Bibb County. Now, the southern part of this warning does include Chilton County. Maplesville, I think you're fine, okay? Uh, let's, but, but I say that to say, stay indoors. Make sure that you have a good way to get these warnings. Continue to listen to us uh, because we're watching this. This is a very well-defined area of circulation, and look how this has just wrapped around within itself right now. Let me point out, let's go back to our debris signature. Look at this debris signature, Alex. Strong tornado, and it's heading towards Tabernacle. Yep, strong tornado on the ground. This is indicated by our um, debris signature. I'm going to leave this up right now. So this is tracking off to the northeast, okay? Vic, Trio, active. This will skirt just to the northwest of Oak Mulgee. Get into your safe place. This is actually the strongest debris signature I've seen on a storm in the last few weeks. This isn't just tonight. This might be one of the strongest I've seen so far this season. This is serious, folks. And actually, Alex, I think we just, um, not I think, I know, we just got a return on our debris indicator near Brent as well. But it's, it's a little bit behind near ha uh, Harrisburg at this point near Choctaw Hill. Yeah, and I think that may be a, uh, I, I don't think we're getting debris on that one. So I think that may be the radar getting fooled there. Got it, okay. But that, that, is, that is the storm right now. So this is the one we're going to focus on. There are two warnings in Bibb County. If you're pretty much anywhere in Bibb County, uh, 
east of Brent or north of Brent, get into your safe place. But we're going to keep our focus on this particular storm right now. It's moving just to the north of Oak Mulgee, heading towards Tabernacle, then Trio, Active, Bib Mill, Antioch, Randolph, any of those communities along Highway 82 between Maplesville and Brent. Get into your safe place immediately. This storm system is moving into Bibb County. We have a dangerous situation, tornado on the ground, capable of producing quite a bit of damage. We can see that by our debris signature right there, and it held together. Look at this. Mm. This, this is a serious situation, very serious situation, okay? Southern Bibb County, please get into your safe place because this is, uh, this is turning into be a very serious situation. Let me go to our storm relative velocity. This is, uh, you can see right here is where we're looking at that, that area of rotation, okay? This is traveling northeast at this point, uh, tracking at about 50 miles per hour. I think that's the latest speed on this particular storm system. And uh, as we zoom in here, I want to zoom in very closely just so we can do a little radar analysis here. This is an intense situation. All right, so this is Tabernacle. We've got Tabernacle, Active, Lolly, okay? Lolly, Active, Mod, Tabernacle. Get into your safe spot. This is a serious situation. You will not have time to get somewhere. Trio, anywhere between Active, Mod, Trio, along Highway 82, Tabernacle. Get to that safe spot. This is a serious and dangerous situation that's unfolding. I'm going to call out some road names now. If you're getting into your safe place, but you can still hear the sound of my voice, uh, you know these storms are nearby. So you've got Martin Road, County Road 29, and then moving north out of Tabernacle, Bibb County Road 29. So that's County Road 29. That pretty much parallels Highway 82. Then, of course, you've got Highway 82 from Trio, Maud, back into Active. So northwest of Tabernacle, get into your safe spot at this time. This has just crossed over State Route 129, also Selma Road. This is holding together. This is a serious situation. It's just crossed over this, the county line. So this has now moved out of Perry County. It's now moving into southern Bibb County. A serious situation. Tornado on the ground. There's an undoubtable tornado on the ground. This is a serious and dangerous situation for southern Bibb County. I'm not sure if we have any way to, to reach out to any emergency managers for any confirmation um, from our newsroom or if there's been any other information to come in at this point. Uh, I, I do want to do a quick real-time analysis with you, though, because I want to look at some of this. Um, let's look at this real fast. So I want to see these wind speeds. Look at this. Uh, 93 miles per hour in some spots. Now that's going to be at the upper levels plus 60. These winds could be exceeding 120 miles per hour at Earth's surface right now. So these surface winds. Hey, we got uh, a new tour. I'm sorry. A yeah, new you're fine. Warning. This Go is ahead. for Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa County. If okay. you are in Tuscaloosa, you need Serious. to get in a safe place right now. This is. All right. Uh, Strong right. winds in downtown. This is our Tuscaloosa Tower Camp. Okay, Alex, let me zoom out here. Uh, Alex, do you have that on your radar? I've the, got it right here. So I, I'm going to switch to Alex real quick so he can show us. It's for this circulation here. It's moving right over the city of Tuscaloosa right now. Uh, this is your circulation here. So from Devondale back to Tuscaloosa and Northport, this is moving north and east. Holt, Cottondale, you need to be in a safe place right now, as well as everyone in Northport, Tuscaloosa, back down to Devondale and Inglewood. And this warning does include the city of Brookwood as well, and then moves off into northeast Tuscaloosa County. The area of rotation is moving right through Tuscaloosa right now, right through here. Uh, so we want all of you to be in a safe place. I still want those in Bibb County. You've got to get in a safe place. That is a potentially violent tornado on the ground moving through Bibb County. That is, that is really dangerous stuff approaching Trio, uh, Antioch, Oakley. But uh, we want the folks in Tuscaloosa to get into a safe place right now. This is going to be north of Central High School, uh, basically between downtown and Alberta City, lifting north and east back towards Holt. So if you're watching us in the northeast side of town, close to the river, and then back towards Holt, you have got to get into a safe place. I want to stress this is not a confirmed tornado, but based on that circulation that we have there, we want you in a safe place. And you see that live view there from Tuscaloosa. I believe that we were told this is in downtown. Uh, the wind really whipping there. That's at City Hall. 
in downtown Tuscaloosa. So uh, that is going to be at this point probably a little west of where that strongest circulation is. Uh, but uh, that is going to be uh, moving towards Holt, Wood Village, Lake Ridge, Alberta City. So if you're watching us out that way, you have got to get into a safe place right now. We have a likely violent tornado ongoing, though, in Bibb County. Uh, this is going to be a little west of Tabernacle, approaching Trio. Uh, if you live towards Trio, Maud, anybody east of Brent needs to get in a safe place right now. This is going to cross Highway 82 east of Brent, probably not too far away from uh, from County Highway 29. Um, but that is that is a dangerous, dangerous tornado. And again, we'll, we'll pop that debris signature back up. Those deep dark blues and purples showing up. Typically, only pop up when we have a, uh, a a very strong tornado on the ground. So that is a, a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado. The latest from the National Weather Service in Birmingham is that this is a particularly dangerous situation. And if you know the language of the Weather Service, you know that is not language they use for every storm. A particularly dangerous situation right now uh, for that storm. We still have that tornado warning that includes far eastern Tuscaloosa and northern Bibb County. I don't want to leave you guys out, but we don't have a confirmed tornado there. There's some broad rotation north of West Blockton, about to cross Highway 5 north of town, and this will probably Approach highway uh, or excuse me, Interstate 20, uh, probably right near the Tuscaloosa Jefferson County line. It might be a little east of that, uh, but uh, we want folks in eastern Tuscaloosa County to be in a safe place, as well as for those north of West Blockton and Bibb County to be in a safe place. And then in Tuscaloosa County, again, Holt to Wood Village and Lake Ridge from Alberta City north, you need to be in a safe place. The city of Tuscaloosa, probably within the next five minutes. If you live in downtown we, and Northport, if you live in town, we may be able to give you an all clear. But for now, I want you in a safe place as well. But particularly on the east side of town near the river uh, from Alberta City north back towards Holt, Wood Village, Lake Ridge, I want you to get in a safe place. That is a dangerous storm that is exhibiting rotation. But uh, actually, that, that storm yeah. in Bibb County continues to look like a really, really bad one for us at this point. That is a large and extremely dangerous tornado mm -hmm. per the National Weather Service. This is moving primarily over Tal Talladega National Forest right now, but it's going to cross Highway 82 and then approach Antioch. So if you're watching us there, you need to get in a safe place. Trio, Antioch, you're under the gun for this. This is going to stay east of Brent, uh, but this is a really dangerous situation. Ashley? Yeah, Alex, so continuing to watch this, this is holding together, as you mentioned, a particularly dangerous situation here as the storm system moves over Tria, uh, moves over the city of Trio, over Highway 82, towards the city of Antioch right now. This is going to be impacting places like, uh, 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 well, from Trio to Antioch, there, there's going to be some uh, sparsely populated areas here. It gets a bit more populated right around Highway 82. To reiterate uh, Alex's point, you've got the Talladega National Forest uh, right here. Keep in mind, though, um, that there are just pocketed areas of uh, residential sites through here. So we really want folks to take this very seriously. And if you are close to a shelter, if you live anywhere near Oakley or Bid Mill, you've got just a few extra minutes. Get to that safe place. We're not encouraging you to, to outrun this storm, but if you do have a way that you can get to a site built home, a neighbor's house, a convenience store, do that. That is going to be most important right now. Antioch and Tree, you've got to you've got to buckle down where you are. Wherever you are, you've got to stay in that place currently. You've just got to make sure that you are putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Grab a helmet, protect your head, make sure that you've got uh, rubber soled shoes on, have a noisemaker in the event that there's any type of entrapment, you can get people's attention. This is definitely a serious situation unfolding here in Bibb County and this is moving relatively fast and it's staying together so right now it's right over highway 82 the city of trio it's crossing over highway 82 it's heading towards the city of Antioch County Road 20 Antioch Road
here with this geography over here or any of the roads that I just named, I encourage you to get into that safe place right away. This is going to be a very dangerous situation and our debris signature is holding together. Alex, I was going to mention just a moment ago, we're getting debris signatures as far as 13,000 feet in the atmosphere. That is extensive, folks. Here's what that looks like right now. This coincides with that storm, likely a large and dangerous tornado on the ground over the city of Trio, heading towards Antioch. Next up will be Thomas Mill. If you live on Hill Creek, if you live anywhere Really, anywhere east, northeast of Highway 82, all the way back to State Route 139, Deer Creek Road, County Road 57, or Thomas Mill Road, you need to be getting into that safe place right away. The center of this circulation is sitting right on top of Highway 82, and it's moving towards Antioch Road. It's over the city, basically between Vic and Trio. This is a broad area of circulation, likely lofting whatever's in the path of that tornado at this point. So it is, it's either grabbed a lot of trees, uh, it's grabbed just anything that's in its path. That debris is being lofted right now. Anywhere between eight to 13,000 feet in the sky is how strong this particular storm is. All right, so now we saw this latest scan update. The debris signature is holding together. Let me put it back on our storm relative velocity because this couplet is definitely holding together. This might be one of the longest track tornadoes, not only that we've tracked tonight, but Alex, this might be in the last couple of weeks, one of the, the most um, impressive scans that we've continued tracking on our tornado. Tornado, uh, uh, on our tornado coverage. So uh, we want folks to really take this seriously right now. This is in southern Bibb County at this point, making its way towards Oakley, Thomas Mill, Antioch. If you're in any of those spots, please take this very seriously. Let me move this up because I want to include Six Mile in this and I'm going to include Ashby. We want to make sure that all of these folks are prepared for this particular storm right now. Right now, anywhere from Bib Mill, Oakley, and Ashby, get into your safe spot. Bib Mill, you're likely going to be on a little bit on the south side of this, but I want you to treat this as though it's going to be moving into your backyard because we want everyone to make sure that they are staying safe. This last scan was even more impressive. Th this is a serious situation over yeah. Antioch right now. This is very serious, folks, okay? Uh, let me look at this really quick. Uh, let's put, go ahead, Alex. Actually, I just wanted to point out, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, if you live in, in southern Shelby County and you live in a mobile home or manufactured home, it's time to get to a shelter now. Don't wait on a tornado warning for this. You don't want to put yourself at a time crunch here. So Montevallo, Calera, I'm talking about you. Wilton, I'm talking about you. You need to start heading for a shelter right now. We've got a list of shelters on our website, cbs42.com. Uh, all the shelters in Shelby County should be open now because there's a tornado watch in place. Don't wait for a tornado warning to take action. Go ahead and go now. Don't wait on this. Uh, go ahead and get in your safe place. I don't want you to get in a situation where we get a tornado warning and you don't have enough time to get where you need to go. So if you're in a mobile home or manufactured home in southern and especially southwestern Shelby County, from Calera and Montevallo in particular, the far southwestern end of the county, start thinking about where you're going to go right now. Go ahead and start making those moves to get to a storm shelter. Don't wait on that warning uh, because you don't want to wait till it's too late. So southwestern Shelby County, start heading for that storm shelter now. Ashley. All right, I'm putting a track on this particular storm because this is where the direction is going. And I, I want to reiterate your point about Shelby County. So Southwest Shelby County, go ahead and start bracing yourself for this, getting that plan together. We want folks to have as much time. That's our job. We try to give you as much time to make the best decisions for you and your family. And we want to make sure that you've got all of the tools in your toolbox to make the best decisions possible on this Wednesday evening. The time now is 10-12. We've had extended coverage for much of this evening. And right now, the main focus is this storm moving out of Antioch.
confirmed tornado on the ground. Our debris signature is still in alignment with this storm. So looking at our debris signature, it lines up right on top, which means it's still an active tornado. It is lofting debris where the circulation is happening, and that's confirmation. Remember, the debris indicator is not a forecasting tool. It's a confirmation tool for us. So this is confirming that this area of rotation is producing an area uh, or producing a tornado. So we're treating this like a tornado. We are acting like that. And so let me show you this really quick. I just want to put our shear rate on here. You remember t earlier tonight I talked about that S shape that we look for? Well, this is, uh, this is textbook at this point because this is the shape that we're dealing with. So it's this kind of snake, this S shape right here. So that's going to be a very intense area of rotation. And this is actually the most extreme winds that we've seen on our severe wind parameters for tonight. And we're seeing that dot of yellow amongst the red and the green there just outside of Antioch, south of Six Mile. So where we're seeing that dot of yellow, this is where the most extreme winds are occurring. County Road 57, this is going to be traveling due east. Thomas Mill, get into your safe spot. Um, and then this is, uh, let's see, Lakewood Cove, and then over towards Oakley, State Route 139. Anyone along State Route 139, get into your safe place right now. So again, this is our, our shear marker. It's, it's a fancy name for it. Shear just means, simply means the change in wind speed and or direction with height. But you're noticing even still that we are still tracking this wind field. Look at this, these, these kind of deep maroons that you see on your screen. These are aligning with our severe wind parameters here. So a confirmed tornado near Holt. Confirmed tornado near Holt. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out. We'll do a quick reset here because this isn't the only tornado warning that we're looking at. Let's go ahead and zoom back in to this uh, storm system. Uh, let me put our velocity product back on here. So we'll go to our Birmingham radar site and then we'll look at our velocity. So we've got um, two areas. So here's that second tornado. So folks, we, we're, we're in the middle of two tornadoes. We're going to bounce back and forth. Um, Alex, if you'll do me a favor, keep an eye on the southern storm. I'll take Holt for a second All if right. we need to pop back on for that storm. But again, this, this is a serious situation. This storm out of Bibb County moving towards Alabaster right now. But let's go ahead and focus in on the storm moving out of Tuscaloosa. Con confirmation of this storm outside of Holt. So this is east of Holt, does not include Northport, does not include Tuscaloosa, but it will start making its way west of Birchfield. This is north of Fleetwood right now, really north of Interstate 20 and north of Fleetwood and Brookwood, but this will be traveling north, northeast. Let me zoom out here. Next up, Providence, Bull City, Oak Grove. There is a good chance that we could see this warning in Tuscaloosa County extended into western Jefferson County. So anywhere from Providence to Oak Grove, again, we want to make sure that you have enough time to make the best decision. So right now it looks like there's a second tornado on the ground with this particular system that we're tracking. So again, this is going to be just to the east of Holt where we're seeing the, um, the newest uh, tornado warning for us or the newest tornado on the ground, I should say. Let me go ahead and put our debris tracker on here and let's see if there's any, there it is right there. Um, and that scan actually just bumped that up. So that would also, uh, again, confirm what we are seeing now on our, um, on our radar. So this is our debris signature where you're seeing those yellows on the screen and that aligns precisely with where we are seeing that rotation. Let me circle that rotation for you. It's where that red and that green is coming together for us on the map. That's tracking off to the north, northeast. So places like Bull City, places like Birchfield, get into your safe spot right now. This storm system will be traveling to the northeast. So Brookwood, you're okay. You're fine. Fleetwood, you're going to be safe, um, but this is just slightly due north. Even though Fleetwood and Brookwood are in this warning box right now, the area of circulation is just to your north right now, but I want folks in Birchfield, Bull City, Providence, take this seriously, and I would even extend it out to Oak Grove. I know the tornado warning doesn't go out that far, but I want to go ahead and make sure that folks know that this is the trajectory of this storm system, and you could be in the path of that so um, just be mindful of that. Now, as we're looking at these storms currently, these are completely rain wrapped in nature. So no one needs to go out trying to chase these storms, getting pictures or videos of these storms. These are just completely wrapped in wet weather. We've got rainfall picking up from Concord, North Johns, Lakeview right now. Light rain in the Birmingham metro. But let me, I, I want to just see currently, because 
You know what's interesting? I'm not seeing a whole lot of lightning. We actually saw a ton of lightning in these storms as they moved out of Mississippi. But let me look at our Tuscaloosa sky cam very quickly. Although the, um, the main bulk of this storm has moved just to the east of Tuscaloosa, this is our Tuscaloosa tower cam currently. And what we're looking at is just some heavier rainfall. You can definitely see that the uh, rain is still falling there in Tuscaloosa. But the bulk of the activity is now shifted just to the east of Tuscaloosa at this point. Another camera I want to pull up is Summiton. Summiton faces the south, and it generally picks up on storms that are moving into the Birmingham metro, into Jefferson County. Sometimes we can see well off into the distance. One thing we're noting right now in Walker County is how heavy that rain is falling currently. So not a whole lot to see, but did you see that ripple effect of that rain across that camera lens? That's indicative of these wind speeds that are really howling tonight. One thing I will make note of is this storm that's just moved through Holt is this is a very well-defined inflow notch right here. A quick glance shows me that this storm does have some good energy kind of feeding into the back of that, and that's looping back around, creating this area of rotation that we're seeing and that's going to align when I switch this over to my velocity product right on top of right where we see that rotation. Look at that. So that's exactly where those reds and greens are coming together. We call it a couplet, and that's where that spin in the atmosphere is occurring at this moment. Let me just do a little radar analysis for us in real time. So winds have actually weakened a little bit. This doesn't necessarily mean that the, the storm's gone away, but it has broadened out. I will say that these last scans to me are a little bit more promising. So hopefully that storm system is... Um, starting to behave a bit more. It looks like they're trimming off the backside of that warning and they're not extending it into Jefferson County for now. So I do want to hop back down very quickly to this storm, though, in Bibb County, although it looks a lot less impressive right now. Still got that debris signature, it, Ashley. Okay, let's go back to that debris signature. Oh, there it is. All right, so let's zoom in here. Uh, it's okay, a little sorry. displaced from the area of circulation at this point. So what we're going to see here with our relative velocity, so we've got winds picking up. This is what remains. It's, it's actually kind of close, so it's near Ashby there, so, yep. um, but not near. There it is, right there. Oops, let me zoom back into that one. So this is going to be just outside of Ashby between Oakley and Briarfield, so this is where we would see that. Now, as, you know, as, as we all noted before, maybe not as impressive, right, as the debris indicator from moments ago, but... Um, I don't want anyone to let their guard down. This is still a very serious situation. This may be the difference between an EF1 or an EF2 tornado. It could be the difference between 80 to 120 mile per hour winds. I mean, we're, we're, we don't know. We can never tell by a radar exactly how strong those winds are, but what we can indicate by the debris indicator is how high it's being lofted, and that's the force of these storms. So we can determine as meteorologists, and we can say, hey, this is definitely a stronger tornado. Uh, we can't necessarily pinpoint those wind speeds, we can use our velocity products definitely to help guide us there. So that actually, that debris signature falls right on top of where we're still seeing those red and green pixels kind of coming together there on our screen. So that's still something to take note of. This is right over Frederick Pass. This is moving right towards Briarfield. If you're in Briarfield, go ahead and get to your safe spot right now. This is going to be crossing over State Route 139, moving towards State Route 25, and then moving towards Wilton and Montevallo. So if you're in Montevallo, get into your safe place right now. If you're in Wilton, get into your safe place. And if you're in Briarfield, get into your safe place. This is right next to the Ironworks State Park. It's okay. right over there. And yeah, if you're if you're over towards Wilton and Montevallo, I think I think you may need to start heading in your safe place. You're right, Ashley. Yeah, and you know we don't have that warning extended just yet. But as we have mentioned, even with the Bibb County storm, we talked about it out of Perry County before that warning was even initiated. So we want to make sure, especially if you're on these um, what I call them kind of like precarious county lines, uh, you want to make sure if you live just on the inside of a county, uh, you're you're getting enough time to get into your safe place, right? You don't want to wait until that warning is issued uh, to take action because we don't want Want it to be too late. So we feel like we're doing our part to help give you as much time as you possibly can to get to your safe safe spot. And sometimes that safe spot's not inside of your of where you are right now. So if you do not feel safe where you are and you live in Montevallo or if you live slightly north of that, uh, northeast towards Altmont or Country Hills, I would go ahead and say you've got a little bit of time. You can get somewhere right now. But if you're in Birchville to Wilton, you've got to hunker down. 
down where you are, you, you probably don't have enough time to take action to get in a car and drive somewhere unless you can walk over to a neighbor's house very quickly. Getting into a site built home is going to be very important at this point. Now, I will say, if this is of any, any encouragement, the last few scans for this storm in Bibb County have shown signs of weakening. I tell you, this was a fierce fierce storms. One of the most fierce that I've seen. warning for Shelby. I'm sorry, Ashley. All right. No, that's fine, Alex. Go right ahead. So, yes. Yeah, so, now we have that. Uh, Alex, why don't you give us the latest info on that Shelby County storm? Yeah, and that's going to fill in here in just a second, but I can tell you right now it's going to include Wilton, Montevallo, and we've still got a good circulation here. The colors may not get as bright. We're getting really close to the radar, so we're scanning lower here, but there's your new warning. Wilton, Montevallo, uh, this is going to clip the northern side of Calera. This is going to include... Uh, 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 clear all the way up past the airport there. This is going to clip parts the southern part of Alabaster. This does not include Pelham or Helena, as I can see, but Deerhurst uh, back down to East Saginaw. This does not include the main part of Columbiana, but it may clip some of these Columbiana addresses uh, back to the north and west of town on Highway 30, uh, 34, uh, Joiner Town. Uh, if you're watching us in, in these spots, you need to get in a safe place. I think that's still a tornado on the ground there. Uh, this is going to be close to the intersection of Highway 139 and Highway 25, and this is going to be moving up towards Wilton. This is probably really close to the, uh, the Boondocks Barbecue uh, north of Briarfield, and then heading over towards Wilton uh, near the, uh, uh, the, the wood products there. Uh, and then up towards uh, the, the town of Wilton, and then ultimately into Montevallo. Uh, I was in Montevallo just this just this last week, working on a story about storm shelters there. There's a new storm shelter in Montevallo at Stevens Park. Uh, so I hope there are some folks there taking shelter right now. We still have that debris signature. This is now the north side of Highway 25, approaching the town of Wilton. And then it's going to ride up Highway 25 towards Montevallo. All the students at the University of Montevallo need to be seeking shelter. Uh, uh, there are places to seek shelter on campus. And then uh, if you're in the city of Montevallo, you need to get to a safe place, whether that be uh, in a basement or in the lowest floor of your home, away from doors and windows, or uh, that storm shelter that's brand spanking new at Stevens Park. Uh, you need to get in there right now. This thing is probably going to be in Montevallo in the next five minutes. So uh, you need to get in a safe place. I do agree, Ashley, this does not have that violent tornado look that it did, but it is still there. We still have that circulation showing up, moving into Wilton right now. This is moving into Wilton and Montevallo. Uh, and we do still have debris being lofted by this storm. So tornado still on the ground, still a very dangerous storm. We want to get you in a safe place uh, as that moves now to Shelby County. Uh, at this point, I think we can give Bibb County the all clear here. This is going to be a Shelby County issue now. I do want to point out uh, for those in Bibb County on the southern end, uh, we've got a new storm with a tornado warning on it in Perry County. That's the Montgomery market, but it's in the same spot that this one is. So, same places in Bibb County as before, Tabernacle, Abercrombie, Trio, east of Brent, essentially, in the county, understand that you're not under the gun right now, but you could be very soon. We still have evidence of a tornado here uh, approaching the city of Montevallo. The debris signature is still there. This is going to be in Wilton. Uh, this looks like it's very close to City Hall there, but Wilton's a small enough town, it's, it's close to everybody. But uh, the debris signature there is close to uh, Shoal Creek, and this is going to go up and move into Montevallo. This is probably going to be close to the cemetery there. It's going to be close to Montevallo Middle School, Lucky Supermarket, uh, the tractor supply, and then down towards Main Street, Montevallo High School and the University. You need to get in a safe place right now. This is a confirmed tornado that's sitting right here in Wilton, moving in your direction. So you have got to get into a safe place. You've got less than five minutes, so you need to get in that safe place now if you are watching us in Montevallo. And then ultimately, north side of Calera, past that, you need to be getting into your safe place as well. If you live back towards the uh, Shelby County Airport, you need to get into a safe place. This is heading your way. So still a dangerous storm with a confirmed tornado moving into the city of Montevallo right now. That tornado warning is still in effect for Bibb County, but that storm 
has wrapped, uh, has, has moved up into Shelby County. This is not a Bibb County issue anymore, but I don't want Bibb County. Uh, I don't want you guys to think you're out of the woods yet. You've got a severe thunderstorm warning for a storm pushing in from the west uh, out of uh, uh, Hale and Tuscaloosa counties, and you've got a storm to your south that could produce a tornado, uh, and that is going to be moving into the southern end of the county in the same kind of spots that dealt with this tornado a while ago. So, Ashley, it's still a dangerous situation right now. Yeah, and some good news, Alex. They just canceled that Bibb County uh, portion of that tornado warning, but like you mentioned, might be a sigh of relief momentarily, but it's only for a moment as we are still tracking that storm on the south side out of Perry County, ironically taking the exact same track as this previous storm just did. I want to focus my attention right now on Shelby County as we are starting to move into more of our populated areas of central Alabama. This is a live look from our Alabaster DOT camera. This is looking is it north up I-65 there. It looks like that's the Alabaster exit for us. Um, here's the good news for Alabaster right here at the exit on the interstate. Uh, this storm is going to stay just slightly south of this exit, okay? But I would still be very vigilant, okay? This is one of those nights where it is so important that everyone kind of take responsibility for, for where they are and how this will be impacting this because it will be passing Alabaster uh, somewhere around 840. So the time right now is, is 1028. Excuse me, it's going to be passing at 1040, uh, 1028 there. Got Country Hills at 1030. 33, then Glen Forest at 1035, up to Buck Creek Park and Camp Branch at 1039. Uh, there's Camp Branch kind of right there in the center of your screen, and then moving up towards East Saginaw at 1050. This storm will be tracking off to the north northeast. The latest scan, um, so things are going to get a little interesting, all right? So this is heading right towards the radar site. So this will make things, one, uh, really evident on our radar, but two, we start to get a little bit of a hole there uh, right over Shelby County Airport where this is going to be heading towards right now. But look at the signature. We've got a very clear area of rotation, but it has started to lose some of those properties. But we still can see this circulation here, this rotation, if you will. So let me draw this out for us. So this is going to be Spring Creek Road, Highway 119, kind of wrapping back around here right over Montevallo. So if you're in Montevallo, get to your safe place. This is now beginning to make its move off to the northeast pretty quickly. These storm systems are moving very fast tonight. This is heading towards Country Hills, right along State Route 119, County Road 12, County Road 16, and then making its way towards Shelby County Airport. So if you're watching us right now, that's all this circle means. It's, we call it a hole. So that's all that is currently is just where the radar site is. So it's sending its beams out, and then um, so that it creates a little bit of a hole. There's nothing magical about that. That's not anything to do with the storm that we're seeing. That's just because that is the radar site that we're currently monitoring right now. So let me zoom back out for us because I want us to watch this. Uh, I want to go back to our debris signature here. So on our debris signature, uh, it doesn't look as impressive, but I do want to point out, see this dot of green on your map? That would indicate where we're seeing our latest debris. And remember, the debris signature is something that we use to confirm confirm a tornado because the debris indicates to us that the rotation that we've been following has produced a storm that has lofted debris into the atmosphere. That debris which has been lofted is now being picked up on certain scans of our radar. So uh, this is a really fancy, if you want to get really into it, it's called correlation coefficient. But notice the last scan, uh, we actually don't really see it as well defined. So it could be showing signs of some weakening, which would be really good news here because this has been a very long storm. I would even venture to say maybe even a long track tornado that we had tonight, a long track violent tornado on the ground as it moved out of Bibb County into uh, uh, southwest Shelby County. Putting our storm relative velocity back on here, almost in this last scan, Alex, and I, I hardly see any rotation with this one at this point. Uh, not as well defined, and generally as you get closer to the site, you're able to really pick up on a lot of those key uh, key elements, but not really seeing it quite as impressively right now. So let me zoom back in here. We're right outside of Country Hills at this point. Uh, we saw, I mean, we're still seeing some broad area of circulation, some rotation right over County Road 17, County Road 15, Highway 119, and County Road 16. And this is, again, making its way north, northwest, right towards our radar site, or northeast, I should say. So it's sitting just west of our radar location right now, moving 
off to the northeast. And the speed of these storms have been pretty fast tonight. Again, somewhere between uh, 50 to uh, 55, some earlier tonight, closer to 60 miles per hour. Right now, they're roughly at about 50 miles per hour for these storms. Let me do this. I I'm going to do a quick reset because we've had a lot going on. We've been jumping from Bibb to Tuscaloosa to Shelby County. So let, let me just do a quick reset for us. I'm going to put our reflectivity on here. This is what we are used to seeing. And the reason I want to do this is uh, we've been focusing on the tornado warnings, rightfully so, but I want us to have the same um, kind of urgency to respond to our severe thunderstorm warnings as well because these are producing wind speeds in excess of 50 and 60 miles per hour could be gusting upwards of 70 to 80 miles per hour which is the same as an EF0 tornado okay it just lacks the rotation this is a serious situation Coleman County right now has a severe thunderstorm warning with it and we also have severe thunderstorm warnings back through western Bibb southern Tuscaloosa County and northern Hale and the uh, very edge of Greene County but Look, I have some great news for folks from Marion County, Lamar, Fayette, and Pickens County. You are in the clear now. The storm has moved past you at this point. Still dealing with some very heavy rain in Jasper. Still a strong storm now in Bibb County. So Bibb County really getting a, uh, the brunt of a lot of this tonight. And that's where we're seeing some very heavy rainfall from Vance down to, towards Eline, Brent, Moffett, West Blockton up to Lakeview. So along Highway 5, you're about to get some really strong winds there. I do want to look at our velocity product because uh, likely indicating that we're dealing with some pretty strong winds right along that leading edge. I want to keep my eye on this area and just outside of Moffett towards Eline, uh, but that's where we could be dealing with some strong winds and likely having some rotation now getting close to that I-65 corridor, although a bit more broad at this point. I want to look back at our storm relative velocity. So we still have um, a good amount of, let's see, we, we still have some circulation with this storm system and looking at our debris indicator, not as impressive at this point. So it looks like we've lost Lost that debris signature, Alex. Correct me if you see. I mean, no. maybe, I, it, but this is it's it's pretty much gone at this point. I, I think we've lost it. I want to point something out though for folks who are watching us in Coleman County now. A severe thunderstorm warning in place. The National Weather Service in Huntsville, responsible for Coleman County, noting that a tornado could quickly develop here. They're 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 adding a little tag to the severe thunderstorm warning. It says tornado possible. A few spots that we're watching. One west of Coleman, one south of Smith Lake that'll be making its way towards Brushy Pond here in the next few minutes in Dodge City. Uh, back so Colony, Brushy Pond, Dodge City. I would be getting in a safe place if I were you, particularly if you live in a mobile or manufactured home. Coleman to South Vinemont to West Point. Same thing, Simcoe. Uh, you need to start thinking about that. Baileyton, and then eventually, potentially back towards Joppa, Arab, and uh, uh, th those spots need to be thinking about this. All of Coleman County, with the exception of the far northwest corner, back towards Battleground, uh, you are under a severe thunderstorm warning, but we can't rule out a tornado quickly developing there. If you live in a mobile home or a manufactured home, you know what to do at this point. You need to get into a better shelter. Uh, so this is a storm we're going to have to watch really closely. Again, we'll pop the shear rate on here because it may be showing you. Again, you can see some brighter spots popping up here, and, and that spot in particular is one that I think we'll have to watch pretty closely over the next few minutes. Again, we still have the tornado warning for Shelby County. Ashley, uh, I don't think based on what I'm seeing at this point that that is a confirmed tornado. The Weather Service has removed the, well, let's, let's take a close look at this. I said the Weather Service has removed the confirmed tornado tag, and they have done that. I think that may be noise there from the radar. Let's let me do a quick investigation here. North of Crossroads, check just north of Crossroads there as you zoom in uh, west of Saginaw, um, a little closer to the radar site. There could be a, a little bit. I think I think so. I'm, I'm scrolling back and forth here near the radar site. I, I think that may be hitting trees here. The, the, these two these two areas right here are not. Because when they're not moving, so that's that's good news. We don't have debris that I could see at this point. Um, <clears throat> all of this stuff here is 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 just sort of radar artifacts. So thankfully, no confirmed tornado at this point in Shelby County. There has been one, but it appears, at least based on radar data at the moment, to have lifted. Still watching a storm in Perry County that is rotating. No word from the Weather Service on this one yet, but it would be the same spots. 
Abercrombie to Tabernacle, Maud, basically everybody east of Brent in uh, in Bibb County. That would be uh, if that it gets extended. That would be the uh, the warning. Uh, the, it would be basically the same tornado warning we saw for Bibb County a while back. And again, still closely watching this storm in Coleman County. Uh, it's got some 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 spin within that line and likely some damaging winds as well. Ashley. Yeah, I want to point out this storm may be cycling just a little bit. In the last scan, we started to see a little intrusion of that green back into the red. And because we're so close to the radar site, I kind of take all of these pixels and we have to kind of do that analysis. I liked what uh, Alex said. He called it radar artifact. So there are some things once you get close to the radar site, which this this circle right in the middle of your screen, um, there's a little noise on the radar. So you know we really have to start dissecting this. This is where um, the the benefit of a huge Human meteorologist is we can really look in and dive into all of these little features, something much more than a computer can do. So, uh, but one of the things that I did notice in the last couple of scans, there's just a little intrusion of that green back into the red. So we'll be monitoring this from Saginaw to Longview. So if you're along I-65 Highway 31, I would go ahead and treat this uh, because the tornado warning is still active. Let's go ahead and treat this as an active tornado warning situation. So between Longview, Saginaw, along 31, back towards Camp Branch. Uh, Alabaster, I think you're fine, um, but you know, probably not a bad idea just to kind of batten down the hatches, get 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 close to the interior of that house. Uh, we we don't need to race with urgency to the basement, but but let's just um, practice some safety over the next uh, I would say five to ten minutes there, anywhere from Alabaster over towards Camp Branch. But in the last several scans, this has really broadened out. Um, very very little. Uh, Shows me that I mean we're basically at this point we're trying right we're trying really hard to find the rotation when you have to try really hard uh, the benefit to that is it means that it's if there is even a tornado on the ground it's likely not going to be very strong uh, but at this point I think it's just a broad area of rotation sitting right on top of 65 and Highway 31 but because this storm system has had history of producing not only a tornado but likely a violent and possibly long Longer track tornado. Um, I want to make sure that folks know that this could potentially cycle back pretty quickly, and we need to just be on guard for that. We don't need to wait and say, oh, wait, now we've got to take action. Let's go ahead and take some of that action right now. So keep that in mind along I 65, Highway 31, Camp Branch, anywhere from uh, Camp Branch up towards East Saginaw. I do want to revisit our Storm Team Tower Cam, and actually, we're double boxed now. This is our uh, this is our camera there in Alabaster. So this is looking along I-65 there at that main Alabaster exit. So, um, and this is that Highway 31 exit in Alabaster. You can see how the rain is really picking up there. Look at the road, okay? You can actually see how the water is rippling across the road. That's because of the wind. So the wind is very strong in this situation. So that's important to note too. So again, we have a tornado warning now. It clips just the edge of alabaster. So go ahead and again kind of practice that precautionary uh, safety steps there for for the city of alabaster. But as I zoom in here, fortunately we're not seeing any impressive redevelopment even with the later scans. Pretty messy, I would say so. Uh, Alex, would you agree it's it's pretty much falling apart at this point? So here's the latest from the Weather Service in Birmingham. And so what they're noting is, is this is getting to a spot that's close to the radar and it's at a position north of the radar where it can be a little more difficult based on how this radar is located to see some of that spin. Okay. We're very confident we don't have a tornado on the ground now, but we don't, we're not confident about the level of spin we've got. So the radar operator there at the Weather Service in Birmingham has noted that for us. They're going to continue this tornado warning for now. They're going to let it go, uh, let it keep going. Uh, so we still want you to go ahead and get in that safe place. We're in a position here, and I know it sounds counterintuitive, but we're in a position where it's close to the radar that can actually kind of make it a little bit harder to see uh, what's going on uh, when it comes to the spin in the storm. Um, but, uh, so the warning still continues, I, I think we can say with some confidence based on what we have, we don't have a debris signature. I don't think there's a tornado currently on the ground, but we, we, we don't have enough confidence that there's, that spin is completely gone yet. So they're going to stick with this for a little while longer. Uh, again, I do want to point out, and I haven't heard anything about this, 
Uh, but for uh, Perry County, that tornado warning continues. We'll watch that for Southern Bibb. It's the same thing uh, for places like Abercrombie, Tabernacle, Trio. Uh, start thinking about heading to that safe place. If that warning gets issued, you may not have, uh, you know, 20 or 30 minutes of lead time. At this point, you'd probably have maybe five or 10. So just be prepared for that. And again, the tornado warning is still in effect for Shelby County, and they're going to let that continue on. It is set to expire in three minutes. I don't know if we can expect a continuation of that or not, though. Ashley. All right, thanks, Alex. Okay, revisiting. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of hold on to this warning where it is. I turned it off for just a second. The reason why we're so zoomed in here, close to our site. Watch what happens when I turn our warnings on. See how it has that kind of glow of red. Uh, so it, it's a little misleading because you might think that those reds indicate some of the pixels. But as soon as I turn that warning off, you can see that goes away. Um, but we will watch this and monitor this very closely. But I'm going to go ahead and call out a few street names and a few cities, even some neighborhoods. That could be in the impact path. So, as the spin of the atmosphere continues, if it is to create a funnel cloud and then become another tornado, we want to make sure that you're already in the safest place that you can possibly be. So, anywhere from Ballantry Club Drive, Ridgeview Lake Road, City of Alabaster, Camp Branch, and then Beyond Saginaw, this storm is moving off to the northeast at this point, but we're going to go up to East Saginaw, Trails um, End Road, and then on to Griffin Road, up through County Road 39 and County Road 336. We've got Highway 11 to our north. So County Road 47 runs you north south there, up towards East Saginaw, and then eventually on into Chelsea. Even though Chelsea is not in our warning box right now, let me put that back on because you can kind of see where uh, that. Ends. So see where this red blinking line is on your screen? That's technically the northern boundary of our tornado warning. It doesn't quite include East Saginaw, but I'm going to go ahead and keep you in this warning box right now simply because there are parts of East Saginaw. So as the storm system starts to emerge over Highway 31 now, we're starting to see it uh, from Ridgeview Lake Drive, Ballantry Club, or Ballantry Club Drive, and then Windsor Lane. So this is going to be the eastern side of the city of Alabama. This will be effective until 1045. So uh, it looks as though they may allow this to expire at 1045. We'll keep a watchful eye on that and see if they're going to be extending this warning beyond 1045. Let me zoom back out because I do want to look at this Coleman storm. I did just notice it has a, a nice little hook there on the back side of the, or I should say hook, some, maybe some rotation and maybe even two areas. But otherwise, what we're going to be noticing for this particular storm is, um, and actually they just canceled that tornado warning down in Shelby County because our, our warning box collapsed there at the top of our screen. Uh, but it still looks like there's some pretty impressive storm tracks down to our south. So still tracking that storm coming out of northern Perry County, moving into Brent. But now we have a severe thunderstorm warning that includes the city of Coleman up through Huntsville all the way into the Tennessee Valley. So this is a pretty big severe thunderstorm warning right now. That's issued by uh, our, our Nashville Weather, or excuse me, our National Weather Service in um, Huntsville. So this is our Huntsville National Weather Service partners there. Let me zoom back out for you really quickly or zoom back into this Coleman County storm. Uh, this is what, we're, what we will be eyeing. If you're in Coleman County, here's what you're dealing with from a rain standpoint as we put a reflectivity on here. So from South Vinemont, Coleman, Good Hope, Loretto, all the way down through Brushy Pond and Colony, heavy rainfall, and this aligns right along I-65 at this point. So we want to make sure that you're um, you're just inside. I mean, one benefit of these storms moving through overnight, we don't have a ton of people on the roads. We're not talking about school dismissals. It's not a busy part of the day where folks are out and about going and doing. So for the most part, most everyone should be inside anyways. So, and now it's just a matter of watching it and, and really waiting, right? You're just kind of waiting for it to arrive. So from South Vinemont all the way down through Good Hope into Colony, it's the time it has arrived. Strongest part of that storm now is crossing over I-65. And next up is going to be Welty, Hansville, and then Bangor, Baileyton, Holly Pond, Bluntsville within the next, I would say, 30 to uh, 30 to 60 minutes, but look at this. So let me track this storm for you. I'm going to put a track on the leading edge of this thunderstorm because this is where the heaviest rainfall is currently. And as we track this off to the east, because again, these storms are moving at about 50 miles per hour. Here are some of those cities of impact. So you have Eva at 1051, 
Simcoe at 10.53. Again, this is kind of a squall line at this point. Then you have North Walker at 10.58, Riverside at 11 p.m., Baileyton at 11.01, there's Baileyton, down to Holly Pond at 11.02, and then Bluntsville at 11.06. If you see your city on this screen and the corresponding time, that'll give you a good idea of when these are set to arrive. So again, as mentioned, between the next 15 to 20 minutes, could be seeing several of these storms. The time right now, 1047 on this Wednesday night. It's been a long evening of tracking active weather. Now that line is really crossing over I-65 from north to south. Our western county starting to see the clearing sky, and that's the end of the severe weather for you tonight to our west. This will continue into east Alabama, though, as we get closer to that midnight hour. So the threat is not over, and just because we're diving deeper into the evening hours does not eliminate the threat for any of these rotating storms either. So again, kind of top to bottom right now, we've got some heavy rain. I will be watching this little curvature, this feature just out of, uh, just moving towards Colony right now. That's where I'm uh, maybe a little concerned. We, we're likely getting some very strong winds with that. So Southern Coleman County, those wind speeds right now, somewhere between likely 40 to 50, exceeding possibly 60 miles per hour with those severe thunderstorm warnings in place. So the only active warnings for our viewing area at the moment, Coleman County, we still have a tornado warning in place for Perry County. That's in our Montgomery viewing market, but because it's so close to that Bibb County line, we I want to bring your attention to it. But right now, those are the only active two warnings that we have, but we do have quite a bit of messy rainfall, gusty winds moving through the Birmingham metro as we speak. Let me zoom back into the storm, northern Perry County, and this is the one. Now, this has broadened out quite a bit as it's moved into Oak Mulgee. Heavy rain Rainfall, though, crossing over Highway 82 from Trio to Antioch. And I tell you, this is the exact path of the previous storm. Weather Service says they're going to let that one go. Okay, good news there. So, benefit to this is um, the storm, and it has broadened out. I'll just show you kind of what that looks like on our. Um, on our storm relative velocity here. So yeah, this, this has really lost a lot of that rotation and circulation. However, that being said, look at the winds right here. Those winds have really started to pick up back in Trio. So this is something to watch. Look at the 64 mile per hour winds there. So uh, likely, likely getting some big old wind gusts between Vic and Active along Highway 82. So the good news is the tornado warning is going to be expired. So let's zoom back out very quickly. Uh, that means, Alex, that right now, we, in our viewing area, the only thing active is going to be a severe thunderstorm warning for Coleman County. Uh, we're going to let that tornado warning expire, and we'll hold on to the severe thunderstorm warning in Coleman County. Even though we have some activity moving through Jefferson County, right now not prompting any type of warnings for Jefferson County or the Birmingham Metro, but we are dealing with some very strong winds across the map at this time. Let me see... Uh, I just want to quickly look at some of our rain rates because we do have some intense rainfall. The one concern I have for the Birmingham Metro and even northern Shelby County, I call them the usual suspects. So when we start to get some pretty intense rainfall rates, which we're seeing indicated by these bright purples, that can lead to some flash flooding. We, we don't have any reports of flash flooding right now. Uh, notice east of I-65, so that'll be the east side of Hoover along 459, that's Acton Road. 280 the summit all the way up towards Grant's Mill Road and then that reaching up to 59 uh, the interstate 59 corridor that rain rate right now is about six inches of rain per hour and just kind of reminding you how this works if this intensity of rain stuck around for an hour this is how much rain would amount in the bucket there it's not going to rain that long these are faster moving storms but even in a short amount of time these can produce some trouble spots on the roadways this can create quickly rising water and lower lying areas, especially places near the Cahop Valley. If you're anywhere near creeks or streams that are prone to some quick flooding, just be mindful we are getting some higher rainfall rates right now in Jefferson County. Hueytown to North Johns and Lawson Town, you're getting rain rates anywhere from about six inches of rain per hour to about seven and a half inches of rain. 
per hour. So this is turning into a big rain event for Jefferson County, although no active severe thunderstorm warnings for Jefferson County at this time. Uh, looking at that flood potential, not much. You'll notice a couple of blue dots on the screen. That would indicate where there could be some flooding potential. So right, right now, this is not a widespread flooding event. Let's look at our cameras because I do want to look at the BJCC with all of this heavy rainfall moving in. You'll notice on our sky cam here, look at the lights of the city, uh, almost limited visibility. It, it looks like um, it's just a hazy night. It's just the rain. The rain is collecting on our camera lens there. Uh, kind of hard to even see the distinction in the buildings. You can see the glow of City Hall there in purple, and we can definitely see that it's raining actively here across Birmingham. Quick tour of the skies. Let's go to Summerton now. Summerton Sky Cam. I really like this Sky Cam. It sits in the southern part of Walker County there, and Summerton. It's uh, facing south, so it's kind of facing towards the city, and you can actually a lot of times see the city lights illuminated, and it bounces off all of the rain in the atmosphere, so it kind of looks like this bubble of uh, white off in the distance. Right now, heavier rainfall is falling in Summerton, and you can see that rain kind of rippling across the camera lens at this time. Just rain, not even seeing a lot of gusty winds down there. We can generally indicate that by our, uh, we, we watch the flagpole down there, um, but not, not really seeing a whole lot as we're looking at that. This isn't going to be, this is going to be a dark view there in Anniston, so not seeing a whole lot. Sometimes we can see some lightning, so in these evening shots, that tends to be a bit better there in Anniston. Um, but looking at Tuscaloosa, still some heavy rain falling in Tuscaloosa County at this hour, so we'll be, uh, we'll be watching this rain. Now it's starting to turn into a rain event now that this main line is moving across I-65 right now. It's a lot of wet weather back to our west, but we are starting to trim off a bunch of those counties back to our west. So let's kind of talk about what we can see for the remainder of tonight. I do want to look at our temperatures and dew points because this is kind of an interesting story to tell. Here's why I think there we might um, see some improvements through the evening hours. Notice the dew points. So that's going to be the number on the right hand side here. So Jasper's dew points at 63 air temperature. It makes sense. It's raining when the air mass is fully saturated. Uh, your, your dew point, your air temperature is the same. Now your air temperature will never fall below your dew point. But when we're looking at severe weather, when we have dew points in the low and mid 60s, that's on the lower end of uh, severe weather to develop. Okay. Uh, when you start to get to 66 degree temperature, dew point temperature, or above, uh, that's that's almost just a, a, a no-brainer. You're going to have some storms. That's enough energy in the atmosphere. 63 degrees to about 65 degrees. It's a little bit gray. Not always a guarantee. But now, when you have those air temperatures dropping and you have lower differentials between your air temperature and your dew points, um, it doesn't take as much umph in the atmosphere. But look at East Alabama. Those dew points are still holding in the 50s, but they will get a little bit of rainfall. And with some of that rainfall, it could actually bump up the dew points a little bit. So it's something we'll be watching very closely. Notice the air temperatures along I-65 and west are in the low to mid 60s. That's because it's rain cooled air. And now that the rain has moved out of Hamilton, it's drying out. Temperatures are cooling down. So that's one of our coolest spots right now. If these dew points to our east hold in the mid to upper 50s, that will be hard for a lot of these storms to um, continue. And that may be very well why, as the storm system moved through Shelby County, it really started to weaken quickly. It's running into essentially stable air. So unstable air meets stable air. It just doesn't have enough energy to sustain itself. But we still have dew point temperatures in Alabaster at 64 degrees. So there's energy in Shelby County, but as it moves east, notice they quickly drop into the upper 50s. So that's just something we'll watch, kind of giving you some real-time analysis there. Might might be a little bit more than you, than you care to hear about, but um, but let's let's go ahead and do a quick reset. And uh, Alex, do you have some new information there? Yeah, just a couple of things that that are kind of popping up okay. to me at this point. Uh, the storm now moving through Bibb County. Uh, this is east of Brent, uh, out towards. Uh, this will be moving towards Thomas Mills near Antioch, six mile uh, Oakley. Uh, so this is in the eastern part of Bibb County. Has started to ramp back up. I don't think this looks tornadic at this point, but we can see those winds are popping back up now. We're starting to see those uh, get a little bit more impressive looking. There's some convergence there. That's usually a sign that we've got to watch that storm really, really closely. Also, a storm in southern Jefferson County. This is going to be south of Bessemer, uh, basically from the 2459 interchange south all the way back down to the Bibb County line. Again, 
same kind of thing. Heavier rain, and we're starting to see a little convergence there within that little piece of the line. That's something we're going to have to keep a close eye on here over the next few minutes. So, Hoover, Homewood, uh, uh, Bessemer, uh, back towards uh, far northern Shelby County, Indian Springs, Inverness. Don't let your guard down just yet. Uh, same for Eastern Bibb and uh, West or Southern and Southwestern Shelby County. This is not the time to let your guard down. A few damage reports coming in. We've got a lot of reports of uh, trees down. Uh, a couple of structural damage reports. Uh, Briarfield Fire is uh, reporting a mobile home that was overturned. Uh, this is going to be, excuse me, uh, Pea Ridge Fire, I believe, is where that's coming from. But that's going to be near Booth Lane. And uh, from uh, Montevallo University, uh, uh, University of Montevallo, uh, Brook Hall has part of the roof missing, and that would make sense based on the radar signatures we saw. It looked like the the tornado uh, lifted just after crossing over the University of Montevallo. Uh, Want to stress: no tornado warnings in place. We do have the severe thunderstorm warning for Coleman County. I think there are likely some winds of at least 50 miles an hour in this storm in eastern Bibb County, Thomas Mill. Oakley, Briarfield, Ashby, Six Mile. Uh, this is heading your way. Uh, and again, Southern Jefferson County from Bessemer South, that storm is going to be one to watch as well as it moves towards Hoover. So just something to keep an eye on. I, I don't think we are at the uh, point to call it all clear by any stretch just yet. While we don't have anything active as far as tornado warnings, make sure you stay on guard here, particularly southern Jefferson County, northern Shelby County, and then eastern Bibb and southern Shelby. Just keep a close eye on things over the next few minutes. Ashley? Yeah, and I actually have kind of popped up right now. This area of circulation will be tracking right along 459. It's broad. You know, um, I wouldn't you know, that's that's all I'll say at this point. Is it's just a broad area of, of of rotation. So from Hickory Grove up through New Village. So this is Bessemer, 459 Highway 150, uh, Lacey's Chapel there uh, near near Ross Bridge. It just basically means it's going to get really windy. But I want to tell you that it's not a tornado. It's just going to be really rainy and really windy here. So uh, just be just be aware of that right now um, as we kind of look ahead to um, to what's going on here. In parts of eastern Jefferson County. Let me zoom out real quick. We still have a, a few storms we're tracking, and we'll do a quick reset for us. So, uh, lightning is actually beginning to pick up just a bit for this storm just to the east of Brent. Again, that's the exact same track this storm system took earlier tonight. So, let me reset our uh, radar view currently. I have some good news. Let's talk about good news right now. Who, who loves good news? I do. Here's some good news West Alabama from Hamilton, Sullivan, Fayette, so Marion County, Fayette. Fayette County, Lamar County, Pickens County, you're clear. Winston County, you're almost clear, right? So you've got a little wet weather in East uh, East Marion County there, or excuse me, Winston County, east of Double Springs. So still some rain in Arlie, still some rain in Addison, um, but that rain is non-severe. Pretty much same with Walker County. Although you're dealing with some wet weather right now, the threat for tornadoes is over for you. In Tuscaloosa County, not quite yet, but the eastern side of Tuscaloosa County still dealing with some heavier rainfall and some gustier winds. So most of the activity right now is aligned along I-65 and then down towards the city of Brent along Highway 5, Highway 82 from Tuscaloosa to Brent. And then this is traveling due east at this point. So next up, we're going to start to have some pretty strong winds from the city of Sylacauga up through Harpersville, Chelsea, on into Greystone, into Birmingham, and then that travels along I-20, Talladega, Anniston, Gadsden, probably by, I would say, anywhere between 1 to 2 a.m. So we still have a little runway of time as we're dealing with these storms, and it currently, and let me put our warnings back on here so we can see that. I took them off for just a minute. Our active warnings at this time, our only active warning in our viewing area is Coleman County. Notice the lightning picking up here in Birmingham. Things are going to get a little noisy in Jefferson County. Rumbles of thunder and these uh, booms, uh, these sparks of lightning that you can see, and, and again, these rumbles of thunder, that's going to be the kind of the big story here. You can see these tracks on these storms in Jefferson County. So they're moving out of southern Jefferson County, making their way across I-65, traveling up to northeast Jefferson County. So some heavy rainfall in Coleman right now. 
Coleman County dealing with that heavy, heavy rainfall and very strong winds there. Um, I do expect that those winds are starting to make their way uh, a little bit to the north, northeast. This is turning into a big rain event there in Coleman. I want to zoom into Coleman because I want to talk about the wind speeds that we're looking at. I'm going to put our velocity product back on there because I do want to indicate where we could be seeing some of those stronger winds. Actually, it doesn't look like we're seeing much rotation right now, which is actually good news. Um, let me switch out our uh, radar very quickly. Let's see. So if we look at this, we can um, kind of see what we're looking at. We have several um, areas, or radars across the state that we can look at. So from Good Hope to Hansville, things are probably starting to get a little dicey for you. Winds are picking up just a bit. Rainfall is definitely increasing in intensity and in tempo. So this is from Coleman down through Good Hope, Hansville, Garden City, right along Highway 31 there, and then moving next towards Simcoe, Berlin, Walter, and Holly Pine, and that's 278. So 278 east of I-65, still going to be in what I consider kind of our threat zone for the evening, where we could be talking some heavy wind, some strong, uh, some excuse me, some heavy rainfall, some strong winds, and some frequent lightning even. But west of I-65 along Highway 278, we are seeing much improved weather conditions. Even though the western side of Coleman County is still under that warning, you are going to start to see a lot of improvement there, and that's some much welcome news for folks in Coleman County, I'm sure. This has started to slow down just a touch. This, this storm system was really zooming across the western half of the state, but it's almost as though it's approached I-65. It's kind of pumped the brakes just a little bit, so um, we'll be watching for that. It's slowing down ever so slightly. So let's do this. Um, Alex, why don't you pull up our power outages when you have those ready? Just let me know because I have a feeling that between the wind and the lightning, we probably have quite a few hundred, if not thousand, of customers that are without power right now. Um, fortunately, this is not going to be followed by any type of extreme change in temperature meaning a deep dive overnight. Um, it might just be an inconvenience more than anything, uh, but otherwise it's not going to be as threatening if we were dealing with, let's say, a cold and frigid blast of air that would be more dangerous. Um, but right now we are still dealing with that severe thunderstorm warning. Pretty big one. It's pretty much draped across the midsection of the state, the northern um, little path there, including Coleman all the way up into the Tennessee Valley. But as I zoom down, uh, let's, let's kind of look through this one more time. I'm going to switch over to our Birmingham Tower Cam. Did you see that lightning? That is some um, yep. intense lightning here in Birmingham right now. So I do want to kind of keep an eye on Jefferson County because the lightning is increasing. And a lot of times with the lightning increasing, that tends to mean that these storms are starting to just uh, just gain some energy. This is going to be a lot of rainfall from Hueytown, Birmingham, up through Adamsville. This is making its way towards Helena, Alabaster, and Hoover right now. Very soon, crossing over I-65, making its way into Indian Springs, Inverness, Meadowbrook, and then on into Chelsea, Greystone, and that's where this really heavy rainfall is up through the summit, Cahaba Heights, and then Interstate 59. Let me put a quick track on this as we're tracking this off to the east at this point. And, uh, this is, let's see, 45 to 50 miles an hour. So here's that storm. Okay, a lot going on here, but just bear with me. There's a lot of cities. We're, we're kind of reaching one of our more populated areas or our most populated area of the night. So no, nothing active, by the way. This track does not indicate tornadoes. So if you're just joining us, d don't panic. This is not for a tornado warning. It's not even for a severe thunderstorm warning. Just talking about heavy rain. We just want you to know when that wind is going to arrive. So it's it's it's. It's there. It's at Regents Field, Hoover Met, Protective Stadium. It's right over the station. I can attest to that. We heard the rumbles of thunder booming here over the station, um, making its way to Fairfield, Birmingham, and Fultondale between now and 11.07, so just a couple of minutes. Mountain Brook at 11.10, and then on into the airport by 11.11. .11. So that's some of the um, impact cities, and those are the communities that will be impacted here within the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, again, this storm system now heaviest rainfall lining up right along Interstate 65 and right along Highway 31. Is that our weather alert unit? Okay, so this is near Cherry, uh, Cherry Avenue in Forestdale. So this is our CBS 42 weather alert unit. And uh, we are obviously 
uh, safely traveling through the rain right now. And, and fortunately, not seeing a whole lot of folks on the road tonight. That's good news. But again, it is that time of the night. Fortunately, we're not contending with commuter traffic. We're not talking after school or before school for that matter. So thankfully, it's later at night. So it should be one of the least impactful times of the day as far as impacts for people um, in their kind of daily routines. Uh, most people's daily routine has them at home about this hour of the night. So hopefully everyone is there and we're just kind of all riding this out together, quite frankly. So, all right, Alex, you got some new info for me? Yeah, some good news oh, to great. report regarding tornado watches. So from Winston, Walker, Tuscaloosa, Hale, Green, Sumter, Pickens, Lamar, Fayette, Marion Counties, you're done with severe weather for tonight. It's still raining for some of you, but the severe weather threat is over. That tornado watch continues for Coleman, Blunt, Jefferson, uh, uh, Shelby, Bibb, Perry, Chilton, Coosa, Talladega, Etowah, St. Clair. It includes uh, for North Alabama, it's still going on for Madison, Morgan, Jackson, Marshall, and DeKalb counties. This will all expire at 1 a.m. They might end up having to extend this a little bit further east, though. I will point out so for Cherokee, uh, for uh, Calhoun, uh, for, for uh, Clay County, for Randolph County, for Tallapoosa County, you were not placed in, under a tornado watch so far today. We'll see how things go here over the next couple of hours. It's possible that they might end up having to uh, extend that east. Hopefully this will wind down and that won't end up being the case. Want to talk about power outages. Jefferson County leading the pack. 12,000 without power right now in Jefferson County. 1,000 without power in Shelby. 3,000 without power in Tuscaloosa County right now. Uh, 1,500 without power in Bibb. Uh, 4,500 without power in Walker County. Right now, uh, state of Alabama statewide uh, has. Let's see what we've got the update here on uh, power outages for the whole state. 45,000 people without power right now in the state of Alabama. As these storms move through, we've bumped up ahead of states like Mississippi and Louisiana, but they still got many power outages from the storms that have moved through earlier today. We wanted to let you know. Uh, that, of course, with storms moving through, crews will get to you as soon as they safely can, but, but be patient this evening. Uh, it's going to take some time for everybody to get power back, but at least the good news, Ashley, is for, is for uh, West Alabama. We are basically uh, uh, done with the tornado threat, uh, which is fantastic news. And again, hopefully these storms will keep on pushing east. Hopefully we don't have any more big issues with these storms. And uh, we end up getting to a point where uh, we, can, we can wind this down. Uh, still watching this storm in Bibb County, though, really closely at this point. Mm -hmm. I think the winds are probably pretty strong moving into Wilton and Montevallo right now. This is not necessarily severe, but these are spots that already dealt with the tornado uh, earlier this evening. So, Wilton, Montevallo, this is not a severe thunderstorm warning, but some damaging winds possible here that don't quite hit warning criteria. We're probably talking 40 or 50 miles an hour. So just be aware that's moving on in uh, for you. And then, Ashley, as you talked about, it is not fun right now in the Birmingham metro. So from Birmingham back down to Hoover, things are getting a, a bit rough here. Not necessarily what counts as severe, but uh, is certainly impactful right now from Birmingham, Homewood, Hoover, and then ultimately this will be pushing back into Helena right now. Heavy rain, gusty winds, not severe, but not fun, and this will continue to push to the east. I-65 is going to be tough to travel on south out of Birmingham towards Alabaster here as this moves on in, and this will be continuing to push off to the east, so back towards uh, Inverness uh, uh, and Brook Highland. Uh, it, this, this storm is going to continue to be an issue, and again, really heavy rain, perhaps some small hail and some, uh, some really gusty winds in Wilton and Montevallo right now as well. Ashley? Yeah, I want to show you these wind gusts. We were just looking at these. So, um, you know, as we've talked about tonight, a lot of the wind that we're feeling and some of the most high impact wind is going to be felt preceding the main line. And that's where winds are really starting to pick up. Now, we do have that severe thunderstorm warning in Coleman County. It has trimmed off the western half of the county west of I 65, but wind gust in Coleman right now at 32 miles per hour. Aniston's winds are picking up 29 miles per hour and 26 miles per hour there in Talladega. 
area. But look at the difference where the winds have really tapered back to our west. The storm has completely exited out of West Alabama. So let's talk about this timeline for the remainder of tonight. Here's our future cast. So we still will have some activity anywhere from Coleman, Aniana, and to Gadsden between basically now and midnight tonight, continuing into Pell City and Talladega between now and midnight by t uh, 12 a.m. early Thursday morning to 1 o'clock from Fort Payne, Gadsden into Anniston, and then traveling eastbound through Roanoke, Wadawi, uh, through Lineville, down to Tallapoosa County, southern part of Highway 280 between Talladega, Sylacauga, getting some rainfall there from about midnight to 1 a.m. And then by 2 o'clock, the brunt of this storm is going to be pressing into northwest Georgia. And by 2 o'clock to 3 a.m., most of that heavy rain is entered into the Atlanta metro, lined up right along Interstate 85 from Auburn through LaGrange into Atlanta, with, with the rest of us kind of clearing out overnight tonight. I don't expect much in terms of wet weather beyond uh, 3 to 4 a.m. for most of our viewing area. Could have some lingering showers, but non-severe from places like Randolph County down through Lee County. So uh, we'll, we'll just be keeping a watchful eye on that through early uh, Thursday morning. But right now, that threat still will persist through about 4 a.m. tomorrow. Threats will include those damaging winds, and we still have to keep our guard up for uh, a tornado overnight tonight. We've already had our fair share this evening across west and even central Alabama. And then those gusty winds, whether this is a tornado-producing storm or not, the straight-line wind impacts could be over 80 miles per hour. So that's something that, that to take note of. And we've definitely had uh, wind events tonight that have created some damage. And actually, we are checking on this. We've had a report, not a confirmation. I'm going to read this uh, directly from our email here. And Bibb County EMA Director Kirk Smith um, reports an entrapment in a mobile home on Booth Lane. So a possible entrapment in Bibb County. And this is likely due to that uh, tornado that moved through Bibb County just a short while ago. So we do have crews on the scene. As we know, with a lot of these storm events, uh, it will quickly uh, evolve from a weather event into a news event. So we have our news crews on the scene tracking um, what is uh, likely some damage. We're getting lots of reports of trees down. Um, so those are going to be some common things that we do see over the next little while. Let me do a radar reset and then I want to show you our forecast because we will have some improvements here coming up. So this is a quick look. Let's go back to our radar right now. This is what it looks like across central Alabama. The only active warning that we have right now is for Coleman County. Um, I don't see any chatter necessarily saying that we're going to be extending that either. So as we look at our Huntsville, uh, strong thunderstorms will continue to impact parts of uh, their viewing area in Huntsville. But for the most part, it looks like Coleman County, uh, there's no talk of extending that any further to include but Blunt County, City of Aniana. Uh, so right now, heaviest rainfall is really right along I-65 and then take a slight jog to the west, the city of Brent and just uh, northeast uh, corner of Perry County, including the city of Oak Mulgee. And this will now be making its way into western Chilton County, moving still across Bibb County and then entering Shelby County. So west of I-65 in Shelby County, you are getting some soaking showers right now. Heavy rain through the Birmingham Metro. Look at our Storm Team Tower Cam in Birmingham. What a sight. Here's what I'll do. I'll actually pull up our Sky Cam so we can see that full screen here. Let me do that real quick because that's uh, that's pretty impressive rain that's falling here at the Birmingham Metro at this time. Wow, look at all this wet weather. Uh, all this rain falling from the sky. So rain rates definitely picking up over the Birmingham Metro. Uh, again, good news. This is not a situation where we have a lot of people out. This is not a commuter time. So hopefully limited impacts. But we could definitely get reports of some of that water ponding on the roadways in downtown. I call them the usual suspects. So we've got some common spots that tend to flood in downtown. We'll be keeping an eye out for those. And of course, we'll update anybody who, who might have travel plans early in the morning. Most of the water, though, should run off within the next couple of hours. This is not going to be a prolonged event. Um, there is a lot of water fall falling from the sky right now, but it's not over a long enough span of time to where we're going to see elongated uh, impacts through that carry through that morning commute tomorrow morning. So right now in Birmingham, we're just talking some very, very heavy rainfall and the strong winds. So winds are really starting to pick up now. We had those wind gusts earlier at about 30 miles per hour. Let's take a quick tour because that rain, while it's picking up here, let's see what it's doing uh, as it's moving out of Walker County. So the rain's 
subsiding just a little bit. You can kind of see the glow of uh, Birmingham down uh, down there in the bottom of your screen. Um, all right, let's let's do this real quick. Um, I want to do just a, a, a quick reset for our, our viewers at home. Thank you for bearing with us for much of the night. We've had extended coverage this evening as we have been tracking uh, a, a night of very active weather across central Alabama. This has been a serious night. Um, and because of the, the nighttime nature of this particular storm system, it may be a little while before we actually get some reports of damage and things of the like. So let me, let me kind of zoom out, though. I want to show you the entire state's picture because even though it might look like things are improving across central Alabama, they are. Look down to our south. We have a very active line of thunderstorms. So that's our Birmingham. So that's our storm. Uh, our, our, Excuse me. That's our CBS 42 weather alert unit there, and it's on Arkadelphia Road currently. So we're tracking, and you can just see that lightning flashing off in the distance. But talk about lightning. Look to our south. Boy, they're really getting a lot of that lightning. Looks like some new tornado warnings also for Dallas County. Uh, so we're going to be we're wanting to watch this, and here's why. A lot of these storms... Uh, Dallas and Lowndes County. Thanks, Michael. So as we're tracking these storms moving east at this point, they're slightly lifting to the north. So that's why we don't want to just discount the rest of the night. And that's why we're staying on air. Generally, we stay on the air for active tornado warnings. Uh, and although we don't have an active tornado warning in our viewing area at the moment, we do have storms to the south that are capable of and or are producing rotating storms or confirmed tornadoes. So we want to stay with these storms because it would not be um, impossible for the storms across central Alabama to quickly cycle or pulse and create some spin in the atmosphere. We have a very intense lower level jet. It's that ribbon of warm air that's just sucking in all of this moisture and warmth from the Gulf of Mexico and it's creating kind of a super highway for wind and it doesn't take much just to t twist that ever so slightly and you start to get a quick spin of air. It's kind of like a top. You start spinning that top and it just spins, spins, spins. So that's kind of how the atmosphere is working with this, with that howling wind kind of at the low levels of our atmosphere right now. So, um, all right, let me, let me kind of revisit what we're seeing across the southern part of our viewing area right now, because again, we do have a tornado warning in place for Dallas and Lowndes County currently. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see where that tornado warning is, and I'll also take off our lightning. It can get a little convoluted with a lot of that lightning. So here's where that tornado warning is. It doesn't include the city of Selma. It's along Highway 80 between Selma and Montgomery there. This is just west of Interstate 85 between basically uh, Prattville and Montgomery, and this is going to be along, uh, along Highway 80 includes Lowndes County. So you've got kind of eastern Dallas County, western in Lowndes County just before you get into Montgomery County and then heavy rainfall from Monroeville down south. So this is our Montgomery market down to our Mobile market and um, our sister station WKRG is, is tracking active tornado warnings along the coast right now including the city of Foley and look at all of that lightning from Baldwin and Mobile counties at this hour and that's going to be traveling north into the city of Bruton and on into Andalusia and up there in Covington County here very shortly. So, uh, but we will continue keeping an eye on the storms just slightly north of Greenville and outside of Selma because these will be lifting to the north. And you know, next up could be Clanton, Chilton County, or Coosa County with some of these storms within likely an hour or so. So I would say if you're out ahead of this main line, if you're in Coosa County, if you're in Tallapoosa County, Talladega, Clay County, Eastern Chilton County, it's not the time to necessarily um, let our guard down and, and be totally tucked in for the night. I still want you to have a great way to get those warnings overnight tonight. Make sure that the weather alerts are turned on in your phone. Yes, it's the same alerts that you might turn off if you have an amber alert, but we want to make sure that's turned on. It does um, produce a very distinct sound on your phone, but it does that intentionally so that you have a, uh, that you can take action promptly if there is a warning that's issued for your area. So the, the phones are smart. They call them smartphones for a reason. It knows where you are in relationship to that polygon and it will alert your phone. So that's, that's primary if you do not have a weather radio, which is really the first line of defense. But for those that don't have a weather radio, we encourage you to turn those alerts on on your phone. Of course, we're going to be here. We've got Team 
coverage here tonight. I'm Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Ashley Gann. We have Storm Team Meteorologist Alex Puckett along with Michael Haynes. So we're here covering these storms and um, monitoring the situation very closely as we're starting to see that heavy rainfall crossing over I-65 right now. And again, we have our weather alert unit out there tracking these storms. We're talking power outages across Jefferson County, a slew of power outages back in Tuscaloosa. So several thousand customers are without power. If you happen to be one of them and maybe you turned on your phone, you can always watch us streaming. Maybe you haven't lost power yet. Also, that's a good reminder. Download our CBS 42 app now. So in the event that you do lose power, you can just turn us on on your phone and we're going to be streaming on air coverage continuously over online at CBS42.com and over your phone through your app. So that's uh, good to know. Um, so the only active tornado warning close by for us is going to be the one that's down in the Montgomery um, market currently along Highway 80 there. So we'll be watching that one very closely. And again, we'll be watching a lot of these showers and storms along I-65. Um, Alex, any new information coming in? Any storm reports, power outages, things of the sort? Nothing new from storms now. I did want to point out uh, something because uh, I understand we are in spring break season. Multiple tornado warnings in effect right now for Mobile and Baldwin counties. No tornado warnings currently in place for Alabama's beaches, uh, but a severe thunderstorm warning in place for places like Fort Morgan, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Alberta. Uh, a tornado warning in place for Foley, places like Fairhope, Daphne, uh, the city of Mobile under a tornado warning, Bay Manette under a tornado warning. Um, if you have some spring breakers down here, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach in particular, Fort, Mo Fort Morgan, Dauphin Island, uh, it's easy to forget when you're on vacation that, that you can still have severe weather. It might be a good idea right now to give them a call and let them know this is on the way and they need to get into a safe place. Avoid things like the sliding glass doors uh, in the condo, anything like that. If they're in a beach house, they need to get into that interior room. If they're in a condo, they need to get into an interior room away from doors and windows. Uh, the, the wind is really going to be picking up on Alabama's beaches right now. Damaging wind likely just passing over Dauphin Island and that's going to head towards Fort Morgan and then towards Gulf Shores and Orange Beach. And again, tornado warnings in place for places like Foley, Somerdale, Robertsdale, uh, Fairhope, Loxley. Daphne, the city of Mobile under a tornado warning right now. There have been confirmed tornadoes. Uh, there is a uh, confirmed tornado or was that was moving over Mobile Bay and pushing towards uh, the, uh, the western shore there. So uh, we want folks to get in a safe place there. And again, there's, there's a lot of people from out of town there. That's always going to be the case for Baldwin County in particular. Um, but uh, if you know somebody down that way, Again, it's 1124 at night. They may not be paying attention to this. Give them that tap on the shoulder and let them know this is on the way. Uh, I will point out um, for those of you who are watching us right now who are not under the tornado watch, this is Cherokee, this is going to be Calhoun, Randolph, Clay, uh, uh, Cleburne, Tallapoosa, uh, the, we, uh, Chambers County, Lee County. Uh, we are going to get a new tornado watch. This is going to populate here in just a minute. They're going to extend this eastward. And we, we said this would be a possibility. So you're going to get a new tornado watch, and it's going to have a really, really late expiration time. Okay, it looks like it is going to be 7 a.m. You will not be under a tornado watch that long. You have my word on that. We will get this canceled for you before that, but this is also going to extend out into Georgia. That's why that expiration is going to be so late. There's the new watch. Uh, so this goes all the way past the state line into the state of Georgia. So that new watch, let me, let me make sure I did my math here correctly. 7 a.m. for Cleburne, Clay, uh, Calhoun, uh, 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 Tallapoosa, Chambers, Randolph, Lee, uh, you are now under a new tornado watch that goes until 7 a.m. For the rest of our counties, this is going to be a 1 a.m. expiration. My guess is for, for our far southeastern counties here, uh, you're probably looking at closer to maybe 3 a.m. when we can get these storms out of here. But once the storms are gone, we'll get the watch canceled. But did want to point out that that watch has been extended to the east. Uh, but uh, actually, at this point, we don't have anything that uh, stands out as tornadic at the moment. 
We have been keeping an eye on this storm in Shelby County. It's moving uh, over the Shelby County Airport right now. Heavy rain down from Pelham to Alabaster. Uh, there has been some rotation in this storm aloft. Uh, we haven't seen it down at ground level. Uh, so if it stays that way, we won't get a tornado warning on it. You can't see any sort of real defined rotation here. That's good news. We want it to stay that way. But we're still keeping an eye on that storm as it moves through Shelby County. Uh, so that is uh, something to uh, keep in mind that, that just because we don't have warnings at the moment does not mean we're out of the woods. And again, for far eastern Alabama, we've got a ways to go before we're done with all this. Ashley? All right. So I'm just checking on those power outages, Alex. This is what it looks like right now. Pretty impressive, uh, uh, this power outage map that we're still looking at. So we've got those outages anywhere from about uh, a few hundred in some counties to 12,000 in Jefferson County. Of course, Jefferson County being the most populated, most residents there. So, I mean, naturally, statistically, this is going to happen this way. Uh, but a lot of customers without power. So, uh, so just be mindful of that. And as I mentioned before, if you are downstream of these storms, so any of our eastern counties right now, you'll notice that there aren't any power outages right now. Be prepared because you likely could be getting some, especially as the squall line moves through. You're already dealing with gusty winds. That's why the power outages exist in Calhoun County. Storm hasn't even gotten to them. It's all of the preceding wind that we had earlier today and still occurring right now. Those peak wind gusts from Fort Payne, Heflin, and Anniston have measured over 30 miles per hour. And again, that's preceding that main line. So that's the wind advisory. That was in place earlier today. As we dive deeper into those morning hours, though, I guess uh, here in the next 30 minutes, it will be Thursday morning. We will start to see the ingredients stabilizing in the atmosphere a bit more. So winds will start to subside a bit. Our severe weather threat begins to go down. But until then, we need to take this very seriously with the power outages. As we remind you tonight, we are streaming the entirety of all of this coverage online, CBS42.com, and also on our app. So you won't miss a beat even if you lose cover or if you lose power um, and you lose access to your television you can still make sure that you're staying apprised to any of this quickly changing weather i do want to show you our seven day forecast because i really haven't shown you this today there will be improvements if the rain has stopped where you are guess what it's done at least until next week so overnight tonight temperatures remain mild we'll be in the 70s tomorrow breezy and cooler by around 15 degrees but we're only cooling back to seasonable values Temperatures in the upper 60s Friday, and then we're going to have those temperatures back in the low 70s for Saturday and Sunday. Sunny and bright Monday with 77 there. Another round of wet weather, and of course, we'll be monitoring that for any severe storms for your Tuesday and your Wednesday. Uh, I'll tell you this, um, and, and producers, you can guide me upstairs. We don't have any active tornado warnings right now, and the severe thunderstorm warning for Coleman County uh, is likely about to expire. That's effective until 1130. We can hold on to this until that expires, and then we will not have any active warnings in our viewing area. So um, I feel comfortable sliding off the air at this point. We do have heavy rain across the state, but no reports of any wind damage with the uh, storms that are going on currently. So what we'll do is we'll hold on until this Coleman County uh, severe thunderstorm expires. Um, I want to make sure that we're warning free across the area, but do know that we will be staying here. We're going to be tracking this all night. We've got full house of uh, meteorology staff where we've got our back house folks. Thanks to our producers, our reporters in the field, our anchors tonight. Everyone is here trying to keep you safe from these storms tonight. So right now, quick reset. Heavy rainfall right along I-65. This is starting to move into East Alabama. Things are going to start picking up for you. The rainfall and the wind from Gadsden, Anniston, and Talladega. That thunderstorm warning has just been canceled for Coleman County. We are now in the clear for the following counties. Marion County, Winston County, Walker, Fayette, and Lamar, Pickens County, and Tuscaloosa. You are all clear. Green and Hale counties all clear tonight down through Sumter County. Still holding on to Bibb County, Chilton County. You're just now starting to see these storms moving into Maplesville. This will be traveling along I-65 there. But currently, no active tornado warnings for our viewing area. But one that we are going to be keeping a watchful eye on is the Dallas County and Lowndes County tornado warning. 
Our Montgomery partners are handling that right now, but if it warrants, we will pop back on air if we need to. Um, we're just continuing to track this particular storm system right now. So we don't see any evidence right now of any additional uh, spin in the atmosphere. We're just dealing with some very heavy rainfall. Uh, this is likely starting to turn into a bit of a news event because we still have a lot of trees down. And again, we have a crew that's being um, that's going to be traveling to Bibb County. The EMA down there did say we could be dealing with possibility of some entrapment so but we're getting we're getting confirmation on that that's um, not not right so we're gonna but we're gonna stay on right now because we do have this heavy rainfall for us um, again thunderstorms from Birmingham into Alabaster at this hour but we are going to start dealing with some heavy rainfall um, do we have some reporters that are, are live in the field I'm, I'm not sure kind of what folks are seeing right now so we have a crew heading to Mo Montevallo right now Okay, so, all right, so we have a crew right now that's heading down towards Montevallo. Uh, we did have a lot of heavy rainfall down in southern Shelby County earlier tonight, still getting a whole lot of heavy rainfall currently, so we'll be watching for that very closely here. Um, this storm system, like I mentioned, is going to be moving closer to that I-65 corridor. So let's go ahead and kind of track what we're dealing with uh, rain-wise and with some of the winds that we've got right now. Alex, if you'll, um, if you'll kind of monitor some of those wind speeds right now, we can position our meteorologist and Michael Haynes is here, so I'm, I'm not sure if we could utilize him at our uh, big monitor over there, but we can kind of walk through our forecast, what's happen happening currently, because if any of these storms spin up, we'll of course be on the air if, um, if we need to be tracking these particular storms. But right now, we've got some heavy rainfall from Maplesville, so that's along Highway 82 and Western Chilton County. This will be making its way to Jemison along Highway 31, down to uh, Clanton there at exit 205, right along I-65. Next up, Calera, Alabaster, and Hoover going to be hit by this heavy band of rain now moving out of West Blockton, likely producing some pretty strong wind speeds at this time. So uh, again, we're just, we're just watching for any of these areas where we could see maybe some spin up and or some rotation with these storms. So as we're tracking this, again, moving over I-65, these storms are moving at approximately 45 to 50 miles per hour, but this particular storm I do want to watch closely because this one has been parked for a little while. So this one could actually uh, produce maybe some flash flooding, but notice the track that I have. This track does not correspond with a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning, okay? This is just simply saying, hey, this line of very heavy rainfall will be moving into these communities over the next, say, five to 10 minutes. Um, so when when that rain starts to pick up in tempo over your house and you can hear it on your roof, you'll know what it is. All right, so Center Hill, 1136. You've got Jemison at 1137 from Clanton. That's going to be closer to 1139. Thorsby at 1139 as well and 10 Top Barbecue. Mm, uh, that's going to be at 1139 as well. So all of these uh, communities really sit right there along Highway 31 and along Interstate 65 right now. Uh, for uh, more details, let's send it over to the Weather Center with Alex. Uh, watching uh, uh, this, this, it's really showers at this point. There's not much lightning in any of this, but some gusty winds in this. This is extending from far southern Morgan County through far northeastern Coleman County and then back into Blount County. So this is going to be uh, moving through Bluntsville uh, and then passing over towards Bright Star, Sneed, Holly Pond, Baileyton. You're dealing with some strong winds right now, probably 40, 50 miles an hour. This is going to push over into Arab. Now that sort of bleeds over into, into Coleman County. County in the far northern end of Coleman County and then back into Marshall County. That'll be moving up Sand Mountain. So it'll go through the valley in Guntersville, then back up to Douglas and Albertville up on the mountain. It's already up on the mountain places like Sneed right now. Uh, so the winds are going to be picking up there. So I've been watching that storm. Again, no severe thunderstorm warning for that. The wind's not quite strong enough. We're going to see the winds picking up in Chelsea now. We'll pop on our uh, uh, shear rate product here, and you can see that uh, we're picking up some wind here. It's not severe, but it is something that we're watching, and then those winds that are pushing back into Wilton and Montevallo now as well. Ashley.
Well, we'll kind of kind of uh, wrap up things here for us tonight, team coverage this evening, and uh, just resetting that view very quickly. Again, no active severe thunderstorm warnings, no active tornado warnings for central Alabama. We've just got a lot of heavy rainfall. We've got some wind, but you know, as soon as we get a tornado warning, we'll be back on air. We'll slide off. We'll go back to regularly scheduled programming. It's been a long night of tracking this active weather. We have news crews that are disseminated to some of our uh, spots that we've been getting some reports of either fallen trees um, or any type of um, damage report. So we'll continue to keep you updated online, on air. Uh, we've had team coverage here this evening. I'm Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Ashley Gann along with Alex Puckett and Michael Haynes on this Wednesday night, soon to be Thursday morning. Keep it tuned into CBS 42 because we still have more active weather to our south and we'll be watching closely. If anything materializes quickly. We'll be here. We'll be the first to let you know. For now, we'll send it back to your regularly scheduled programming. This has been a severe weather alert from the CBS 42 Storm Team.